Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to uh, our, our session of Command Droids. We're playing for a great charity today. I'm excited to have all of you guys here. Uh, Command Droids, for anyone who isn't already aware of the game, it is a game about uh, transforming robots and the kids that pilot them in the style of an 80s cartoon. Think Transformers, think Voltron, think all of these sort of this genre of uh, robot and teenage action uh, that populated uh, a lot of cartoons back in the 80s. Uh, and uh, tonight's adventure uh, will feature uh, these four characters. I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves in, in just a moment. Um, and uh, each one of our players tonight is playing two characters. They are playing their robot and they are playing the human pilot, uh, a, a young person, something about... Uh, the brain chemistry of young people allows them to interface with these machines better than adults. So we got a bunch of teen pilots uh, fighting an all-out war with evil robots from another planet. Uh, and we'll get into that action uh, very, very soon. Uh, I'm going to go down the list here, and I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, but uh, before I do that, I just want to let you guys know a little bit about the format here. We're going to do introductions then I'm going to play a video, an opening credits video, which will sort of hype us up for the action, give you a sense of some of the flavor here. Uh, and then once that's done, we are going to get right into the action. And a word of warning for both our audience and our players here, uh, I am going to throw you guys right into the deep end at the beginning of this session. We're going to go in in media res. Uh, it's going to be all guns blazing right away. So brace yourself for that. Um, and uh, with that, that is all I have for you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and pass things off. I'll just go down the list here and start with uh, Shuleil. Would you uh, tell us who you're playing tonight? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be back on the channel and for another charity. Uh, tonight, I'll be playing uh, Dixon as the pilot and Apollo Max as a command droid. And uh, also, Apollo Max goes by the call sign Turbo, so that's probably what I'll be using more. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, just tell people what you turn into. That might be a useful oh, yeah. like visual. Ah, yes, so that's a good thing. So uh, I will say I couldn't help this sooner than I thought, but I my primary form is a DeLorean. And I have a secondary form, which I'll keep secret until the game. Okay. <laughs> might not be secret for too long, but you've got that yeah. secret for now. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's continue on with Stevie. Hey, y'all. My name is Stevie. I use he, him, himself pronouns, and I'm going to be playing Bowie and Atari Masu, and Atari Masu's call sign is Free Play, and Free Play uh, can transform into a arcade machine. So think about those old consoles that you know and love from the 80s. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun and excited to be here. So excited to have you. Uh, all right, let's continue on with Aaron. Hi everyone, I'm Erin, I'm one half of Escape Box Games, and tonight I will be playing Hayes and Lux Maximo, who is a Lamborghini call sign Belladonna. Very nice, very nice. Uh, and then uh, finally we have Greg. Hi everyone, I'm Greg the Rose, I own Amora Game. Uh, I, tonight I'm playing Randy, who's your uh, party boy jock, uh, and then the bulldozer, uh, no, who goes by the call sign Thunder Beast. Or Thundercat, as I'll be calling him. Heck yeah. I love it. Uh, all right, guys. So those are our characters for tonight. We'll learn a little bit more about them once we actually get into our game. But for now, I would love to play us some opening credits. Uh, Ghost John, if you would be so kind as to make sure our audience can see this video. And we are launching in three two, one, fire. The amazing Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk will return after these messages. Robots, and you control their every move. Behold, by four, Copter. Turbo and Side Hill. The Gobot invasion has begun. My Gobot from Tonka. The Transformers, more than meets 
Lion Robots, Luck Lion, Green Lion, Yellow Lion, Red Lion, Blue Lion. Go! Four, five, four. Who together form Voltron. Lion sets each sold separately from Matchbox. The following movie has been rated PG by the Motion Picture Association of America. Parental guidance is suggested.
Ghost John, the uh, stream no longer need be visible to the audience as long as they can still hear it. And for the rest of you... Pathetic fools! There's no escape! Amid a hail of lasers and machine gun fire, the Symbatrons make their flight down an empty stretch of Route 805 and towards the distant city of Miami. Far ahead of you, the sun sets in pinkish hues over the skyline. It would almost be idyllic and serene if not for the absolute war zone that is erupting all around you. Leading your pursuers is the massive black Apache helicopter, High Inquisitor Vector Ferox of the Nemesite Inquisition. That's the one who was speaking. On the road behind you is a small army of ground vehicles, an utterly insurmountable force. Uh, the four of you have no chance against them, to say nothing of the machine of death that is Vector Ferox himself. Everything has gone to hell. It was a simple mission, and it went pretty smoothly at first. You stole a magnetic code sequencer uh, with data vital to the resistance uh, from an underground nemesite base buried deep in the swampy Everglades, but on your way out, the alarms went off and suddenly it was chaos as the entire base came to life around you and chased you out onto the highway. Uh, free play, you are in tow on Thunder Beast and a pair of armored trucks with mounted laser cannons is coming after you. Uh, there is uh, laser fire coming in from both directions. What are you doing to defend yourself? Are you trying to shield yourself, trying to dodge? Uh, let me start with how Thunder Beast, the driver, is reacting to this situation. So, if it's a situation, if free play is on the front, uh, previous games, we've maneuvered this situation before. I'm going to whip around, like, uh, kind of do a uh, drop the uh, front of the bull bulldozer, flip okay. us, kind of rotate in the air, and start going backwards so free play has a straight action shot. I love that so much. Uh, okay, so you are doing, like, a, your Tokyo Drifting a Bulldozer, which I absolutely adore. That's an amazing thing that's already happening in our game. I'm going to go ahead and ask you for an active mech form, Terra Mech check, to accomplish that. That's that four dice for you. It is. Uh, and while you're uh, rolling that out, just to explain to our audience, system simple for this game. Our players are just rolling a number of D6s, or as the rest of the non-nerdy world knows them as, dice, uh, and adding the numbers together to try to reach a target number. Uh, in this case, it's kind of a support action, so I'm going to let you boost uh, whatever uh, Atari manages to accomplish. Excellent. Uh, I got a 17, 6, 6, 3, and a 5. Ooh, wow, very nice roll. Nice way to start us off. All right, so you get a 17. You execute this maneuver. You're not moving particularly fast. You are ultimately a bulldozer, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you're also an alien robot, so you manage to pull off this normally impossible maneuver where you sort of spin around, giving Atari a perfect shot. Now, I believe, uh, just checking our chat here, that we already have a couple of helpful items in place. So I'm going to go ahead and say that, uh, Atari, you are in robot or gearwalk form whichever you prefer but you have a a sort of like a shoulder mounted laser cannon with you oh hell yeah so first i do uh bowie does a quick quip over the comms and says you know 
not our worst stealth mission. Not our worst. Uh, and uh, free play makes like kind of a sad, like boop, 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 dying sound. Like, ah, I doubt that. Um, and I'm going to fire off the, what would you call it? Po positron, the big cannon that's on my shoulder. Like a, la like a laser it. gun. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. So uh, let's just take a look here for free play. Uh, I'm going to say that is, that will be a, uh, I'm going to give you an active gear walk on that. We'll say you're using your sort of like half form robot arms uh, to sort of like aim that gun. Go ahead and give me an active matrix check. All right. That is a, that's a 12. I don't know if I get a boost from what uh, uh, Thunder Beast did. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna just add your two numbers together and give you this like incredible 28 or something like that. Uh, <laughs> yes. And uh, 29. Uh, anyway, uh, so you you get just, like get, get dead aim. He spins around just at the right angle. You blast right through the grill of this armored truck, uh, and uh, the front of it just explodes in fire. Uh, and and sort of like that vehicle gets runs off the road and crashes into a swamp tree, uh, and the but the other one is still pursuing you. And uh, the mounted gun on the back of that truck is going to go ahead and take a shot right at you. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and give me a uh, passive mech form, passive uh, techno mech uh, to defend yourself on that one. So that would be my Jerwalk Matrix? Or no, no, that's or that's the first stat. So three dice. Oh, uh, mech there we go. Thank you. Ooh, that's a C oven. That's a C oven? Okay, yeah. not great. Uh, I talk so about yeah, game. This this <laughs> massive like like uh, laser blast hits you right in the side. Uh, you take two wound levels of damage. You can mark those on your character sheet by just clicking on two of the injury boxes in the PDF. That'll fill them in for you. These are sheets designed for use and play as well. Uh, so you are already like really messed up uh, by this by this blast and you're sort of clutching the wound. Uh, okay, while this is happening, uh, a trio of sports cars are trying to surround Belladonna. Uh, you are a uh, Lamborghini Countach. You are speeding down the road, uh, but these cars are nearly matching you in speed and are trying to sort of swerve around you. What are you doing with that situation? So what Belladonna wants to do, she's going to use the median as a ramp to bank up and then skate around the top of the cars that are trying to surround her while um, Hayes gets on the radio and says things were going just fine before Randy had to bust his way in. Was it my <laughs> fault this time? Well, I guess it was. Amazing. Uh, okay, so I'm sorry, what, what's the actual action that you're taking here? Um, what I want to do is kind of take those cars out. Um, just ramp around them, I guess? We're trying to get okay. away? Yeah, you're trying to get away. There's really no winning this fight. It's just get away. You might want to do something about the vehicles that are immediately on your ass right now, uh, or you can just try to outrun them. That's your call. I think I can outrun them. I'm, I'm built for speed. Built for speed. All right, go ahead and give me an active auto mech uh, check. That's your mech form stat. Uh, six dice for Belladonna. I need Very to get nice. More dice. Hang on. Uh, and you get plus two dice on any speed related rolls, so you should actually be rolling eight. Yeah, Belladonna's fast. Okay, so. 15, 19, 20, 26, 28, uh, 30. Incredible. Uh, okay, I'm gonna roll a little check for them. Not Try chance. me! Like, they, they start to move to, like, maneuver around you, and you just hit the pedal to the metal. You blast out ahead, and you they're eating your dust seconds later. There's still an army coming after you, but but these particular cars have totally lost the plot trying to surround you. Two of them kind of like crash into each other a little bit, uh, and and you know they're robots, so they they maneuver back onto the road pretty easily. Uh, but you are way out ahead of the group now. Uh, I say way out ahead, but there is another member of our group that uh, still has other issues to deal with, 
and here's where I reveal your secret right at the beginning of the game, my friend. Yep. Uh, Turbo is in his uh, third vehicle form. Uh, you are a uh, a massive fighter jet, and you are blasting through the sky. And Vector Ferox, the Apache helicopter, the leader of the Nemesite Inquisition himself, is on your ass. His guns are railing in your direction. Uh, you're flying, just trying to survive this. Tell me what you're doing. Okay. Um, F-14 Tomcat, if I remember right. That's, what That's I right. So, um, hang on. So, Turbo... Uh, turbo... Turbo tells so this is with with our pilot, right? We're not we're not soloing this. This is both human and mech. Pilot is is in the pilot seat of the yeah. of the jet. Yeah. Okay, right. And you're doing this so, together. Get each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so Turbo 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 just uh, Turbo just says to Dixon, "Well, I know you want you've always wanted to go fast. Sorry, this isn't driving." And he kicks in the afterburners, like does a what do you call a uh, called a, a battle roll? Yes, a battle roll. A battle right? roll? We're so doing a barrel roll. <laughs> yeah, a battle roll. So basically trying to pull up because he's going to make best use of the supersonic abilities of the Tomcat and pull right ahead. And not only okay. that, but also kind of dodge up into the clouds to get out of the uh, field of view. <laughs> okay. Uh, hopefully you can get away. Uh, go yes. ahead and give me an active matrix check since you're using your trinary matrix. matrix. Got it. So uh, it's four dice for you. Me. Just quick take four dice. And I'm gonna go ahead and say that your reflex tuner applies here, so you can add a, a plus one die to that. Okay. Uh, so I got a sixteen on the four dice, and let me roll a separate die. That's a two six Not eighteen bad. total. Eighteen okay. total. Yes. So you rolled really well, and you went really fast. But Vector Ferox is, as I said, a machine of death. And he still catches you bup, 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 down your wing with a hail of machine gun fire uh, as you sort of like twist and try to spin away from him. Uh, you do a barrel roll, but you still get caught in some of the fire. Uh, you take one wound level of damage. You're scraped up. Uh, so go ahead and mark yep. one box. Uh, but you do manage to get a little bit of distance between you uh, and Vector Ferox. Uh, okay, so uh, back down on the road with... Uh, our, our bulldozer and our arcade machine uh, mounted on top. Uh, you are now facing the wrong direction, uh, and this armored truck is like coming towards you, and it looks like it's just going to crash into you. Uh, what are you doing next? Bully, how do we feel? Feeling. Feeling. Okay. Uh, what are the. I have an ability where I can calculate the odds or calculate an outcome of something. Can I like sure. calculate, can uh, free play calculate the the incoming angle of this, of this truck to try and like figure out what's the best way for us to like get out of it? Yeah, I love it. Okay, so go ahead and give me a passive matrix check for that. Matrix plus two, because I'm missing outcome, calculating the outcomes. That is. 19. Okay. You, you like, make a calculation. You've watched this vehicle chasing you for a little while down the road, and you're like, he's going to swerve left at this particular angle, and you, like, know exactly how it's going to go. So we're going to kind of flip what happened last turn, where you're now supporting uh, what bulldo the bulldozer, uh, what uh, uh, Thunder Beast is trying to do uh, to try to, like, not get hit by this thing. Uh, so you have... sort of, like, calculate the trajectory. Do I have time for a quick quip? Absolutely. Always. Always quip. Yeah. Are these, these, they're called the, the, what Inquisition? The Nemesite Inquisition. The Nemesite. Yeah, these Nerdicites are on our tail. Let's blast them up. And do. I love it. What are we doing, Thunder Beast? All right. So uh, if Free Play has told uh, Bowie and Bowie is related to Randy, Randy's going to, you know, do the tap on the uh, Thunder Beast control panel like, all right, buddy, we got to do this and kind of, uh, you know, hit the controls and kind of slide into the van that's oncoming. OK, uh, you try to like you follow the trajectory coordinates that are being like signaled to you uh, and you try to perform this maneuver uh, where you end up 
doing well here. Uh, I think that that's going to go ahead and be another active uh, mech form check for you. That sounds good to me. Three, two, and a six. So, 12? No, sorry, 14. My bad. 14. Okay, cool. Between the two of you, again, working as a team, always better. Uh, you you do really well. You calculate that trajectory perfectly. You hit it in just such a way that it takes the majority of the damage uh, from the attack, despite the fact that it's moving a little more quickly. You just kind of like, you get the front of your bulldozer into the right position, and the front of that car just crunches uh against the uh the bulldozer uh and and goes spinning it sort of flies through the air spinning wildly uh, and crashes somewhere into the swamp and as like it clears your vision you see beyond it this like fleet of 12 jeeps all with like machine guns mounted on them that are zooming towards your group to intercept you uh as part of the whole slide action to turn fully back around and so i can go straight again Abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you kind of like finish the spin, you get back going in the right direction, and you are going as fast as your <laughs> bulldozer will take you. You're doing your best. Uh, Veldana, you're doing a lot better. You're actually ahead of everyone, uh, the other Simbatrons and Nemesites, sort of leading the pack. There's a plume of, of dust behind you, uh, but you realize that Thunder Beasts uh and uh free play are in trouble uh what are you gonna do those slow pokes are always in trouble um how what is the range on scramble spike or scrambler spike uh you that's like a thing that comes out of your wrist so very close <laughs> all right then belladonna gets this sort of if a car could roll their eyes um whips around and starts scooting back towards thunder cat and free play um, in order to get within touch distance to be able to use Gramble Spike on some of the Jeeps that are coming their way. Okay, interesting. So uh, you you sort of like zoom back, you manage to circle around, uh, you know, the, the other cars that were chasing you have gotten sort of like tied up and crashed into each other. You zoom right past them again, uh, this time going the wrong way, unfortunately, but you have to save your friends. Uh, and uh, you uh, manage to get uh, in front of them in a lightning quick second, uh, intercepting between them and the Jeeps. One of these Jeeps is like running towards you uh, in order to use that spike, you do have to like transform into robot form, right? Uh, so you ju -ju 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 turn into your robot form. The spike comes out. This the the jeep at the head of the group anticipates this. He sort of sees you transforming. He turns into a massive robot too, like flies through the air at you. He's got like big like giant metal iron knuckles on his robot fists. He's flying at you like a gorilla but you're trying to get that spike up into him before he gets to you. Uh, go ahead and give me an active function check. Uh, this is gonna be relating to your function as an infiltron. It's not your best area, but you're gonna do what you can here. All right, do I get that one die made to um, Yes, you get the plus interface? one okay. from, from the, absolutely, yeah. So it's at least three dice. Randy looks back uh, in the mirror. Ooh, I think they're both mad at me. Yeah, I think they're both mad at you. <laughs> so it's not great. It's a nine. It's not great. It's a nine. Okay. Uh, you. It's not my thirty from earlier. So you bring up the spike. You don't manage to like strike true, or you get like into his his data core or whatever, and like scramble him. But the spike does like pierce through one of his shoulder plates and like does some damage, and also kind of breaks his momentum as he's coming down at you. But he's still gonna try to pound you with those two big uh, brass knuckled fists. Uh, ooh, give me a uh, passive mech form to kind of like juke out of the way as best you can. Is this something Seven. that we can like help with? Not yet. Maybe okay. on your next turn, but we'll get to that. Yeah, it's a seven. It's a seven. Okay, you you take a bad hit. That that iron knuckle crunches right into your robot body. You feel like plates and circuits uh, cracking. Uh, you uh, take a wound level of damage. 
Um, and you are now sort of locked in combat with this Jeep or with this uh, Sweet. brawler robot. Uh, and uh, so now let's return to the skies. Uh, so uh, we've got uh, Turbo. Uh, you managed to sort of like maneuver your way out of the direct line of fire of Vector Ferox. And you are like in a cloud sort of, uh, you know, out of his line of sight for the time being, so to speak. Uh, you can tell that your friends are like trying to make some kind of a stand to at least get away, and it's not going well. Belladonna went back, she got in the way, now she's getting wailed on, uh, and you currently don't have anyone on you. What do you want to do? I know, this is for me, right? <laughs> yeah, Turbo. Yeah, okay, fair. Yeah, so I was, I was just thinking, uh, is the Nemesite leader on my tail focused on me? So you kind of lost him. You were you were largely yeah. successful in your action. He just managed to hit you with a couple of bullets before you got yeah. away. But you, you kind of juked him. You did a barrel roll, and he's yeah. like looking for you, but he hasn't actively found you yet again. Okay, so what I'd like to do is, uh, does my F-cat come with, oh, sorry, does my Tomcat come with weaponry or without? That's something I wasn't really clear. Well, interesting that you ask that. I believe we had another donation for a helpful item. So I'm going to say that you have uh, a pair of, uh, like, missiles uh, mounted to the underside of your wings. Okay. So what I want to do, right, is uh, come in behind, essentially, the the, pursu uh, the pursuers who are pursuing Belladonna, uh, fly low, fire at them, and perhaps next turn I'll say what I want to do next. But essentially, that's what I want to do. I want to pull up so I catch them by surprise from behind with the missiles. Okay, cool. Uh, and you are, you are you are firing one of your two missiles. That's that's yes. correct. All right, yes. cool. Uh, and in, into like the the jeeps, the group, the vehicles that are like sort of at the front, I assume. Or are you like shooting a little bit back? If you shoot, I'm at the shooting one in the middle. Belladonna I'm shooting in the middle. Yeah. Got yeah, it. I'm shooting in the middle because I do not want Belladonna to get caught in the immediate blast radius, essentially. That makes perfect sense to me. Uh, go ahead and give me another active matrix roll for uh, for that shot. Active matrix roll, okay. But this is without the bonus because I'm not trying to avoid damage. Correct. Okay. Let's see how well. You, I but do. you might say that what you're trying to do is the opposite of avoiding damage. <laughs> yeah, thirteen. Thirteen, not bad. And hey, listen, you don't need to be perfectly accurate with a missile, right? The point is. Yep. If you'd rolled like a five or something, you might have hit one of your yeah. friends, but luckily you didn't. Um, the blast comes down amidst this fleet of Jeeps. There is a huge explosion. Uh, a couple of these Jeeps are thrown from the road immediately. They were immediately like close to the epicenter of the blast. Others are badly damaged, sort of gearing off. Uh, a tangle of vehicles sort of like piles up on the highway, uh, creating like an obstacle for the rest of your pursuing force. Uh, and uh, giving the others an opportunity potentially to get away unless there's something else that they want to do here. And for that, I'm going to turn back towards... We're kind of flipping who goes first with these two, uh, but uh, Free Play and Thunder Beast, what do you guys want to do here? Again, Belladonna has the data. I don't know what to do. I guess keep heading. Yeah, we got to... I think if we can take out the person, the the nerd pursuing her, we can like just get her out of the scrape, and then we can all skedaddle. Cause there's still there's still someone who's fighting Belladonna, right? Yeah, yeah. That guy did not get hit by the missile, cause to hit him would have been to hit Belladonna. They're they're like right on each other, and he's kind of on YouTube, but Belladonna's in the way. Do you want me to flip and throw you? Hell yeah, I want to flip you to flip and throw me. All right. So uh, we'll uh, you know hit the right numbers on Thunder Beast. Uh, he's going to robot change, and we're going to throw the arcade machine. <laughs> and yes. I, am in, I am in my Gerwalk mech kind of thing. Fists out. Um, it's Imagine like there are little spikes coming out of like my fists that are like joysticks, but with the controller, the, the round part removed. So it's just all spiky edges. And I am coming in hot because I also have jump jets. Yes. So... I have my ah, yes. jump jets turning on, uh, help propelling me forward. Um, I want to, the, the goal is to hit this guy with enough force that he goes flying, 
and then grab a hold of Belladonna so I don't go flying. And kind of hitch a ride, kind of. And like, so getting getting the, the bad person off in a way and giving us hopefully an opportunity to escape at a somewhat slower speed because some of us can only go so fast. <laughs> right. So t just to like paint the picture for everybody here, uh, Thunder Beast, you transform into l this massive, like you're big, you're a size class six command yep. droid, you're like 30, 40 feet high, you just turn into this giant robot, pick up this arcade machine, and you yeah. hurl it, little like arms and legs on the sides <laughs> of the arcade machine flailing in the wind, uh, and you just uh, throw him, you fastball special, uh, free play down towards this enemy Nemesite uh, that is engaged with Belladonna. You come down on him. Uh, I'm gonna have you guys both roll here. Uh, okay. In the case of uh, uh, Thunder Beast, mm -hmm. I want you to go ahead and give me a active Terra uh, uh, Terra Mech Mech form check. And do you, can I use my uh, Dia Steel reinforced hydraulic form? Yes, Frame. that would be a perfect Excellent. example. So Plus one me... on strength based rolls. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then while you're doing that, we'll just kind of a simultaneous action here, free play. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a active matrix check? All right. I got a 25. It was, <laughs> it was a hell of a nice I got, one. yeah, holy moly. Uh, I got a 13. Wow. Okay. Well, you both did really well, particularly Thunder Beast. That was just really <laughs> accurate aim. You go right over Belladonna's shoulder, hitting this uh, enemy Nemesite, crashing into him. I'm gonna make a little roll for him right here. You Ooh, can hear it over good. the comms going, <laughs> just like screaming like this is the raddest thing in the world. Amazing. I got a seven on my roll to defend against that attack. Uh, so you like crash into him. You quickly like snap your arm out and grab a hold of Belladonna so that you don't go like flying into the enemy army or like the refuse of a missile explosion. That would be almost just as bad. Uh, uh, and you sort of like flip around and you land uh, in front of her. Whereas this transformed Jeep just goes flying for the momentum of your impact and like tumbles down the road. You see it quickly transforms back into a Jeep and starts like turning around to come back towards you. Uh, if, I, if I may interrupt real quick, yeah. uh, someone, possibly someone in the audience has bought a health boost for the party, but in general, we must uh, possibly also speak in questions for one minute. I'm not sure. That's my attempt. Uh, can we get a, can we get a verification on the questions? Uh, yeah, it looks like that's what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Well, have fun with that, you guys. That's your problem, <laughs> not mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I will handle the health boost, but that'll come into play in just a little bit. Uh, so you guys, uh, and thanks to Matthew Orr for his donation. Uh, you guys, uh, uh, have managed to separate Belladonna from the nemesite that she was locked in combat with. Belladonna, They've gotten some space for you. They are like, I imagine, continuing from that point to just like head out. Uh, are you guys gonna like reunite? Is that your plan? Can we get out of here? I think that's the motive, right? Is that we're trying to get out, right? It is. <laughs> I hope I it is. I keep heading back to you, Slowpoke. So you tell me what we're trying to do, please. I think asking questions. <laughs> You guys are amazing. So most questioning, asking questions is more of a tone thing. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, Belladonna, what are you going to do? You, they've created a moment for you where you can try to get away again. Uh, what are you going to do with the situation? I, I don't want to leave the behind, I don't think. Um, let's remember how characters work, maybe. My allies, I will not betray. Okay, so it doesn't mean I'm not going to leave them behind. Uh, I, if I were a bad person... Uh, why am I talking so much? I need to stop. Ish, maybe? Tell me to shut up if you don't like this! Uh, um, okay. Belladonna is gonna engage her cloaking device and GTFO. Maybe. Okay. Awesome. She uh, thinks? 
you helped create an opening for them. They took advantage of it, got that bot off of you. Now it's time uh, for that action to have returned the favor. Uh, so you zoom, turn invisible. Your your stealth field uh, erupts around you, and you are no longer visible to the naked eye. Um, and you start to uh, are you going vehicle form again? Um, I'll probably be faster like... in vehicle, or does it matter? Definitely faster as a car. Okay, then she'll shift back into a Lamborghini to get out. Okay. An invisible Lamborghini speeds down the 805 towards Miami. Uh, uh, really luckily, safe. luckily you were in the front, so you don't have to worry about like crashing into anybody uh, and them not seeing you on the road. Uh, but you will have to worry about that fairly soon because as you speed ahead, you can see that like the traffic uh, closer to the city is kind of like starting up. There's about to be other vehicles on the road with you. Not necessarily great for a war zone situation, but uh, you've got some distance, so you can still try to lose them in that time. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, I think I'm going to have you make a roll. So, okay, Victor Ferox has lost the trail of uh, the the jet, which sort of actually went back. And instead of going and pursuing Turbo, he is actively scanning uh, for the fleeing Symbatrons. So he's gonna try to pierce through your stealth field with his own sort of radar array. So I want you to go ahead and give me an active uh, matrix check to uh, sort of like reinforce your stealth field and avoid detection. Are you sure I'm not just moving really, really fast? I'm sorry, that would be passive because it's a, it's a defense roll. No, so that's worse. Same amount, same amount of dice either way. Oh, you're right, it's three. it is. But it's not eight either. It's not eight. So that's a seven you. again. I'm at seven okay. today. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay. Well, luckily for you, surveillance is not Vector Firax's thing. He's all about murder, so he didn't do <laughs> any better than you did. Um, and you managed to avoid detection, at least for now, uh, speeding out ahead towards the beginnings of traffic and the sunset over the city in the distance. Um, uh, let's let's go back to uh, um, Turbo in the air here. Uh, you see, you sort of see Vector Ferox. He's he's no longer pursuing you. He's looking for Belladonna. Right. Um. So the first thing I'd like to know is Belladonna is gone. Fine. Um. What about um, Thunder Beast and Free Wave? What are how are they located, respective to me? So you 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 help you help them a lot because you uh, you created an obstacle behind them. So the other vehicles are sort of like having to find a way to go around the mass of like twisted metal from the explosion of your missile uh, to try to get to them. You're kind of flying right overhead of them right now because you came in from behind, right? So you mm -hmm. dropped your missile and then you kept going and you are now like directly over them. I see. Would it be possible for me to directly shift from primary to primary and join them? Absolutely. Yeah. And a question about Freepay. Freepay, are you currently with Thunderwave or are you like kind of running by yourself on the road? <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that is an <laughs> image. <laughs> because you are an arcade machine, right? You can't don't exactly yes. have wheels to... <laughs> I was holding on yeah, to yeah. Belladonna, but I think I also, so I'm either hanging on to an invisible Belladonna, or, or I could like, just hanging on like a failed wind, like a wind ornament. Um, I kind of love that. Let's go with that. So you, yeah. you've changed, uh, you, you're a passenger of someone else now. Uh, you're you're on top. You've got him encased in your stealth field, so hopefully everyone, you're not, people aren't just going to see a arcade machine flying through the air about like four <laughs> feet above the ground. I don't know. Uh, this is an image also. <laughs> you guys do see it. You, you're, you're sort of aware of it, um, uh, and you know whatever the mind's eye of the audience can see it as this arcade machine just flails in the wind wildly, uh, just clinging on with these like sort of tiny stick arms that have come out of him. Uh, to your hood uh, as you are speeding down the highway away. So, 
The two of you are out, uh, are basically free and clear. Uh, what is Thunder Beast doing? So Thunder Beast. I guess, I, I guess again. It, it seems like Turbo is going to react to what you do, so yeah, I'm going to actually exactly. get your action first. That's fair. Uh, so I know I threw uh, free play. Uh, I had probably turned around and started running. Is is there like a construction site visible? Ooh, a construction site. I like it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a, like, a little bit of a random roll here. Okay. A luck check for you guys. Okay. Uh, evens or odds? Odds. That is a three. Okay. Uh, yeah, you managed to see like sort of uh, there's an exit coming up. Uh, you see the exit says uh, exit 84 Bullrush Creek McAdams Grove. Um, okay. And sort of just off of that exit right on the uh exit you see like there's a little construction site a building that's being put together there they're, they're still laying the foundation a couple of beams are up okay so uh turbo will probably see me running towards that and shifting from robot to bulldozer once i get close and go down the uh 95 or whatever the exit was um and then park in a construction spot with all the other ones yeah it's okay, not the first that... time he's done this he's done it before so you 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 are too smart you've been through this this dance too many times to know that you will not outrun your enemy yeah. uh your best bet is to hide um so you are going to go uh into this construction site you peel off the exit um uh into this construction site um and let's see you you sort of like just take up a position there uh you do your best i'm a normal bulldozer that's meant to be here impression that's going to be a active teramech role please okay. Uh, not fantastic. Uh, five. I got a ten. Okay, you got a ten. Okay. Um, so... You immediately see that there's, like, a couple of guys that are working the construction site that are, like, coming towards you with their arms out, like... What the hell? Why is there a bulldozer here? But the nemesites are like not within line of sight to see you pull in so they don't know that you're not supposed to be there so hopefully you just now have like a mundane human problem to deal with a much better situation Randy than what you've been facing that. but uh what is turbo gonna do based on that action okay so he's hiding yeah uh yeah so i was planning something but that would probably blow your cover <laughs> uh um, what time of day is it currently? It's late in the day. The sun is setting in the distance. Okay, fair enough. So we're not exactly late for college or school. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, in that case, um, basically, at this point, Dixon is kind of having the time of his life. Because he, he's like, this is so rad. And... Uh, Turbo is essentially, as Alphatron, he is a little worried about the rest. But seeing that um, that Thunderwave basically has, or Thundercat basically has everything in control, more or less, he's going to follow up on Belladonna and a free, sorry, free wave, free sorry. play, free play, yeah, because they have cool. the package essentially. They do right? indeed. Uh, uh, yes. So, so, so uh, and I'm, you are you are so, back in your DeLorean form, right? So, do I have to make a roll for that shifting across? Uh, no, you don't need to make a roll just okay, to yeah. change that. That just yeah. happens. Uh, but I'm gonna see. Uh, you're you're following up on them. Uh, so you you know like through. I didn't say this before, but you guys are all in like radio communication. You can yeah. talk to each other in in your heads wherever you are. Um, uh, you know that Belladonna and uh, Freeplay are invisible, sort of like speeding along the highway, heading towards some traffic. They'll have to deal with that situation momentarily. Um, what do you want to do as you sort of like get closer to them? So basically, I'd like to go in. I'd like to take the lead, like ahead of them. So basically, when we get to traffic, I can essentially break apart. Given that okay. we are... But given that we are commandroids, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we have much better control over our vehicles than the average human. Absolutely. So we can make totally much valid. better. So I totally, can kind, totally. of, kind of crazy that makes people create a path and they can follow right and right. Ah, oh, <laughs> I get it now. Oh, I see. So you're just you're uh -huh. just like 
being a bad driver and using yeah. that as a way to give them a, exactly. a path. I, and also, I love it. That's so good. I do want to invoke two things here, and this is from Dixon's side. Uh, Dixon is a street outlaw by training. He, what? Is, hang on, one moment. What's I can't drive 55? I'm not exactly sure about my talent. Uh, it's like it's just a quote. It's something that refers to uh, your need for speed. Like you can't yeah. drive as low as 55. Got it. So that's what I'm going to invoke. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to. I want to rock hard and drive fast, and I'm going to invoke my talent of can't drive 55 and basically drive I like a it. madman. <laughs> to I clear love you it apart. so good. <laughs> So, so uh, Dixon is kind of taking the wheel at this yeah. point uh, in terms of controlling the vehicle and is just going right in the middle of traffic, uh, uh, trying to create a path for them. Uh, go ahead and give me an uh, active I can't drive 55 roll, please. I can't drive 55, active to, okay, three dice. Let's see how well that goes. Seven. Seven. Yeah. Not super great. Yep. <laughs> so here's the thing. Your action succeeds at the intended result, right? Like you do mm -hmm. manage to get a bunch of other cars to move out of the way. Unfortunately, you get clipped several times in the process okay. from like people not moving quickly enough. Um, so you take, take you take a, a, a level, a wound uh, level. So Got just it. add another box Done. of damage to your character sheet. Uh, yeah. And you, you get clipped a couple of times. You're scraped up more than you were before. Uh, and at this point, it's not great. It's getting a little more dire. Um, but you do manage to clear a path for them. And they zoom out ahead. The four of you have effectively managed to get away from the Nemesites. Uh, the huge obstruction created by the missile explosion makes it a lot harder for the army to go after you. And Vector Ferox is going in completely the wrong direction, looking for Belladonna. Uh, you sort of hear the whirring sound of his rotors fading in the distance uh, as he gets further away. And you breathe a sigh of relief, knowing you've escaped. Great. But your mission's not over. Indeed. Because you're still in enemy territory and you've still got an important package on hand. No Symbatron bases here. You're sort of like out swinging in the wind right now. Um, let's go back first to Thunder Beast. Uh, Thunder Beast, you pulled into this construction site. You yep. see a couple of guys uh, coming towards the bulldozer and he's like, uh, this guy sort of at the head of his like, what the hell are you doing here, man? Come on. Uh, Randy, will we, we didn't come call out. for a bulldozer. Oh, we're clo we're closed for the. the we, we're we're leaving. We're on a way out. Randy comes out, and I'm sure he has like the the jumpsuit on that most animes have when you're in giant max, and he pulls off his helmet and shakes out his lush blonde hair. Hey, man, I'm so sorry. I'm looking to get out of here. Uh, you know, Bob over at the Himalayan construction joint sent me down here i'm just here to plow a couple of things i'll be out of your way if you don't need me i'll get on the truck and i'll go yeah man we don't need you okay I, I, who 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 sent you here who, who, uh, give me your uh your work order you don't need my work order i'm just heading out out man don't worry put the helmet back on get back <laughs> all right uh go ahead and give me an active good hustle check please okay Eight, nineteen, eleven, twelve plus five. I got a seventeen. Seventeen, not bad at all. Um, so they like these two construction workers decide that they've got bigger problems than like you know chasing after <laughs> you. Um, and uh, you you sort of like at, you know enough time has passed that there's no more like nemesites in the immediate no. area. They're sort of going in the wrong direction. You pull out of the construction site and back onto the exit road. Um, and you start traveling along. Uh, at this point, we are out of combat, so I'm no longer in turns here. You guys can kind of jump in wherever you want. Remember, you're in radio communication. At this point, is there any sort of chatter uh, on the lines between the characters? I would think so. Uh, I know uh, Thunder Beast, uh, whose command droid's name is Bronto, uh, will at least communicate to all the other command droids. Hey, I got you guys. Once we get to a stop, uh, we'll repair you. We'll fix you up, patch up those bullet holes. But good, good taxiing out there, y'all. Okay. 
uh, Dixon uh, gets to uh, Bowie on the radio and says, because uh, he saw the the end of the combat, because like where Bowie essentially did the uh, Superman move, <laughs> more or less. And he yes. said, that was a totally awesome move. Wasn't it? It was sick. Like, man, uh, Thunder Beast just went like whoosh and threw me, and I went like through the air, and then I was like, Boo. and did you see how far that other guy went? It was so rad. It was so rad. You guys are so reckless. This is how we got into the situation in the first place. I like to think of us more as fun. I like to think of us as fun. And look, I, I know I just went headstrong and barged in through the front doors like I normally do. And again, I'm sorry, but please don't be mad at me this time. There was a 10% chance of failure, and you fell into that 10% again. I know, and I'm, I'm going to do better, I promise. But it, we had to get in. There, it, it, We got tired of waiting around. I did. And I know Thunder Bees did, too. <laughs> it, it, hey, man, I'm trying to speak for us. <laughs> Where is our rendezvous so we can get repairs? Uh, I, I'm at least three miles behind you, so I mean, tell me where I need to be, and we'll, Thunder Beast will, will eventually get there. That is a good question. Where are we trying to get? I know we're in enemy territory, but. Um, yeah, so uh, you are uh, waiting for an extraction. Essentially, the plan was that you were going to get out of the base with no one the wiser, that you were there, uh, and sort of lay low for a while uh, a until you were contacted by uh, Ultra Nebularos, your commander, uh, with like instructions for your exfiltration from the area. Um, so that is essentially, you're back on the mission now where you just need to kind of like keep it cool, don't attract any attention to yourself, uh, don't let the nemesites catch you, and survive. Um, you, Belladonna, you have the code sequencer. It's in a small like duffel-like bag that Hayes has over her shoulder. Um, and this is like a device that contains vital data to the resistance. Uh, you just need to make sure that that survives and gets back to your allies. Uh, that is the primary goal of your mission. So at the moment, right now, we're we're waiting for instructions, in essence. Yeah, you're so basically the situation is you can't call for help because to do so might alert the nemesites to your presence. They might mm -hmm. read it. You have a you have closed channel communication with each other, and that's all secure. But if you were to like call your boss, uh, like that might actually lead them to your position. So you need to wait for your boss to find you and then get you out of there. In the meantime, it's just survive this. And in terms of surviving it, you're doing pretty good in that you've lost your tail. Unfortunately, you've also taken a lot of damage. You're all a little bit scraped up from that encounter. Uh, and yeah, your vehicles are, are damaged. So Belladonna, the invisible Lamborghini, is going to pull into an alleyway. Uh, we're in a downtown sort of an area or? Uh, not quite. Uh, you're you're like in the, the boondocks uh, pretty far away from the city of Miami itself. Uh, you are uh, in an area called Bullrush Creek, um, uh, which is like a suburb of uh, the city of Miami. Um, and uh, you're a little bit ahead of where Baranto Geochron, Thunder Beast is. Um, and you're like, you're near uh, like some popu more populated areas. You know that there's like a boardwalk nearby, uh, maybe some like clubs and stuff in that direction. Uh, there's also the city itself. Um, uh, there's the boardwalk itself. So there's, you know, there's like a bunch of people like sort of like walking around. Um, that's that's sort of like the environment that you're in. So Hazel go over the comms and say, we're going to head for the boardwalk. That'll be the place where we rendezvous. Kind of pull behind a building, drop the cloak, and then wrap on the side of free play. Say, Bowie, come on, can we like tie free play down so that he looks like I'm a tech entrepreneur that bought an arcade machine. Yeah, I think that'll work. What do you think free play? And free play goes boop, 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 boop. And I go, yeah, he's chill. Um, and I'll grab, I imagine we've had to do this maneuver before. So I imagine I just have some like ropes with me. Sure. And I like, totally. 
I like rap, rap, uh, free play goes full arcade machine. And I like tie up and go like inside the Lamborghini and like tie it off. You know, I definitely know how to do that kind of stuff. And so I do it and then I get in the car uh, next to Hayes and go, whew, this is way more fun than studying for the test, huh? Oh, I forgot about the test. Damn it. But this is way more cool. Listen, C's are that important. I didn't have the study important. materials in my glove box. Veldana, do you still have those? She's gone to like pilfering through the glove boxes <laughs> looking for her study materials because she has not studied at all for her next test and she has to pass it with an A plus or else she's not doing well. Listen, I keep telling you, grades, grades don't matter. What matters is the grade of life, you know? It's not about the grades. It's about <laughs> wanting to go farther, to learn, to, to push more. That sounds really hard. <laughs> we are literally fighting an intergalactic war. <laughs> Touché? Touché. And you know, I still got a D in history class, so... That's the world for you. You could be getting bees so easily. I don't know why you hold yourself back like this. I think um, in response, Bowie just kind of like puts his hands on either side of his face and starts blowing raspberries. Just just <laughs> <laughs> absolutely childing it up. Do you want to get a corn dog? Yeah, I want to get a corn dog. It's snack time. Yes. Yes, I love it. Uh, so you guys uh, head towards the boardwalk for a corn dog. Um, Thunder Beast, you're chugging along in that direction. Uh, Turbo, you're you're heading that way as well, I assume. Uh, what are yeah. what are you up to? So, uh, my pri uh, Turbo's primary issue now is to keep the team alive until they get to the extraction point whenever that comes. Uh, cool. But because of Dixon, he does know one thing in his favor. It's 86. Uh, what's the name of the movie? Back to the Future came out just last year. DeLoreans are definitely something that grabs everyone's eye. <laughs> oh, for so sure. He knows, <laughs> yeah. So he knows how to keep the attention on him. Got it. Which is... Uh, Essentially, his his backup plan. If everything goes to shit, <laughs> keep draw the humans' attentions away with the with the DeLorean, a good running DeLorean at that because the average DeLorean is shit. <laughs> so sorry for my language, right. but yeah, the average DeLorean doesn't run really well. So he's got a good DeLorean that's going to keep a lot of attention from the okay. from to keep humans safe from the whole combat thing. Sure, totally understood. Uh, well, you've done a lot to attract the attention uh, of everyone around you already by your mad maneuvers <laughs> through the traffic. Uh, and, and and so you sort of like with that in mind, you're heading in the dire generally in the direction of the boardwalk, but you're sort of you start to like drive normally again and like get back yeah. onto the road. Um, and the goal but... is to get to the boardwalk from the other direction that Belladonna and uh, Freeway free, free play did. Got it. So basically, um, if anything goes up, goes up, I can always draw attention from the other side. Cool. Uh, well, it turns out you draw attention a little bit sooner than you thought you were going to, because as you are sort of like uh, like swerving around to go uh, like on the opposite direction, you sort of just like I mean, it's easy maneuver for you. And in order to get on the other side, you sort of like hop the barrier. You are like driving along. And immediately behind you, you hear Broop! as uh, you flashing lights, uh, a police car is coming in behind you. Oh, Dixon is like, oh, oh, rats. I was really hoping this wouldn't happen again. <laughs> he is a fast lane criminal, so <laughs> he's definitely got a record. It's not your first time. Yeah. Blah, blah. Uh, so what do you do? How... So Dixon isn't really going to stop for the police, because that's not going to end well. 
Okay. He doesn't have any intention of going to custody because if he's got a record, they're going to pull him in anyway. <clears throat> so sure. He's going to ask Thunderwave uh, Th Turbo to take over. Sorry, he's going to ask Turbo to take over because he needs the uh, the absolute precision of a command droid to be able to get away in this scenario. So you are going to try to, uh, like, get away from the cop, is yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, so he's, uh, basically what he's going to do, he's going to stop until the cop gets out and then gun it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So so here's what happens. You you sort of start to slow. The cop comes in behind you. It looks like you're just going to pull over and come to a yeah. stop. Uh, the, the cop car comes to a stop behind you. The door opens. This is like a... Like, you know, in in Florida, cop cars, sometimes they're like sports cars painted in, in like the, yeah. the cop colors. So this is like a, a like a Porsche cop car, like a 911. Um, ironically, 911. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, the, the car comes to a stop, door opens, and you see this guy come out. Uh, he's he's wearing like a Hawaiian shirt, aviator shades. Uh, he's got a big, thick mustache, um, and, and he kind of, like, comes out, uh, he's got, like, a bad like sort of, like, swing Yeah, I'd like neck. to yeah. pause for half a tick, and when Thunderwaves, uh, when, sorry, when Turbo sees this, he's like, is this normal for humans? <laughs> for human law enforcement? <laughs> because In now Miami? Turbo Wave is not... Yeah, no, now Turbo Wave is actually, now Turbo is actually worried because he's like kind of a little bit worried about everyone being an emissite. <laughs> so he's like, is right. this an actual cop or is this an emissite? <laughs> okay, so I think that the role there would be a passive fast line criminal to kind of like be like, how normal is this for like a, a cop in this area? Got it. Because you've, you've, Got it. you've run, had run-ins with them before. Yeah. Another seven. <laughs> Another seven. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's a little weird. That car is really nice. And, and, but the way that the, the cop looks is that's totally normal. Cop in a Hawaiian yeah. shirt and aviators with a big mustache down in Miami in 1986. They're a dime a dozen. Uh, okay. so, so, so that is fitting in. Um, and, and it, nothing is sort of like triggering your, your danger sense at the moment. Yeah. Um, but you, you, you sort of like see that he's he's sort of coming towards you, uh, and and now is the moment that you specified of yeah. him like he's on foot, and you have a t opportunity to kind of lose yeah. him, and if you want to speed off, are you still doing that? Still doing that, yes. Uh, okay, cool. Though again, Dixon asks Turbo to take over because he wants the absolute precision to be able to completely dodge the cops. And uh, I as okay. You yeah, and I'd like to assume that our number plates are switchable, but I'm not sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right, they're fake and switchable. So, yeah. For sure. You could, if you can the... turn into a giant robot, so you could probably change the numbers <laughs> of your uh, license plate. Yeah. The only issue is, again, it's a DeLorean, so we're going to have to figure out how to get it. <laughs> we're going to be definitely easy to find, <laughs> so that's going right. to be a bit of an issue, but yeah. For sure, for sure. But either way, uh, go ahead and give me an active uh, mech form, auto mech check to uh kind of like speed away okay that Just should be a fighter jet really freak out the pops <laughs> no uh that might come later but not right now <laughs> okay that's a 16 one six uh okay 16 so yeah you blast down the highway uh the cop just, you see, he just like puts his head in his hands, <laughs> shakes his head, uh, hustles back to his car, gets in, takes off after you, but you're long gone by the time that he's yeah. able to get moving again. And just to, just to specify, it's just not, a, it's not, while I did start off blasting down the highway, I took the first exit and basically tried to get into the side roads so that, Got you it. know, it's kind of like a dodge. Sure, I, I I understand. You're 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 flying casual now, yeah. uh, as you as you get amongst the other cars and you head generally in the direction of the boardwalk, uh, coming from the other side. Uh, but you've managed yeah. to get away from that cop for the time being. 
uh, from the police, I should say, for the time being. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, you you veer off. Um, okay, so I think uh, Belladonna and uh, Free Play are the first ones to get to the boardwalk. Um, so you're here. Uh, it's it's nice. It's sort of like Miami sunset. People are walking on the boardwalk, laughing, drinking, having a good time. There's people of all ages. There's some little kids running around. There's teenagers like you. There's adults. Uh, people are. It's it's summer. It's kind of hot. People are enjoying like popsicles and stuff, frozen martinis, or frozen margaritas. <laughs> it's a frozen martini. I don't know if that's a thing. Um, uh, what are you guys doing? Are you are you kind of like parking and, and looking for a corn dog? What's your plan? I think um, Hayes's plan is to park and then just fade into the crowd, blend in, have a good time, wait for everyone else to get there so we can figure out what we're going to do next. I think Bowie would definitely go get us some corn dogs and come back and then try and float the idea that whenever we're anywhere where there's like a lot of kids or like a lot of people who might play games, trying to execute what Bowie calls the perfect plan, which is to set up free play as an arcade machine and hustle people at said arcade machine and get a bunch of money to then go get a like go get a soda at the drive-in movie theater or or what have you. That might be more 60s. But say, no, but listen, it's totally. a great day. No one would notice, and we could get some change. Only if we park free play in front of the smoothies. Done. And sticks out a hand. <laughs> I imagine Hayes hates this plan, but it's happened a couple of times now. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, cool, yeah, you guys find, like, a... Like a uh, boardwalk arcade there's probably like a bunch of them along the boardwalk um and you sort of like maneuver into position hopefully like out of sight of anyone uh ju -ju 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 -ju, like you know like get up we into have a your device we don't have to worry about fading that's true but do you want to spend the proto voltage i mean kind of but i shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> i think if we okay. like I think, like, okay, so imagine this. Imagine we are, like, behind, you know, the alleys that are behind the businesses? Imagine there's, like, an old, like, dolly or something, and we have free play get on the dolly, so then we can just roll the machine to, like, just inside the alley, so people can kind of see it, but not hopefully too much notice from other folks, and we can be like, hey, want to play this cool machine? In the alley? <laughs> get away with In the alley? <laughs> It's the 80s. People would totally be into that. They'd be like, yeah, that seems like the best alley in the world. Do you yeah, want my social security number? Yeah. Alley if the kids want to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. We're not I love it. to kidnap so you, we promise. Yeah, so so you, you set up as an arcade machine in the alley, and then I guess uh, Bowie and Hayes head into the arcade to try to, like, lure some children outside to the alley. Is that what's happening here? <laughs> I think we could just hang out outside because there's enough kids on the boardwalk. You know, people are roller skating. Sure, you're like waving like, them down like from bells the alley. and whistles and lights, like like fun oh, yeah. things that attract people in. Oh Got yeah, it. and like okay. one of us can like be pretending to play and go, ah, oh, damn it, this is just so hard, or something like that. Oh, try again. It can't be that hard. I don't know. It's impossible. Only like the most cool of people with money would be able to actually win this game i think you should try two more quarters and see if the two quarters help you that's an idea and uh bowie has the thing where like there's a fake coin tied to a string tied to his finger <laughs> which he doesn't need to do but <laughs> he doesn't because he does have the talent commit to the bit so he is committed got it okay cool uh, that is amazing, and in fact, I think we do need some rolls here to, for your your little money making scheme. As as low stakes as it might ultimately be, I I think I would like um, a active cheerleader kingpin roll from uh, Hayes. Not the kind of kingpin I thought you were going to be, but I love it. Uh, and then we'll go with active commit to the bit for uh, for Bowie. All right. Of course, now I get 16, so... Nice. <laughs> I got 11. Okay, cool. 
Um, all right. Uh, so you guys do pretty well. I mean, listen, kids, they're looking to have a good time. They're like, oh, what? Some secret arcade game in the alley? Where's it even plugged in? I don't know. Uh, and, uh, you like, you managed to eventually get, like, a mystery. A, can't be that hard. And, like, some kid comes, like, like big kid comes up to the machine. He's like, let me show you how it's done, shrimp. And he, like, pops a, qu a quarter in. Uh, and he starts playing. He's like, oh, I lost. This game's cheater. We tried wow, again. you really should Another be able crap. to beat this. It's super easy. <laughs> hey, shut up. And he puts another quarter in, and he tries again. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, you you are you are just fleecing some teens uh, of their sweet sweet corn dog money. Yes. Um, uh, while that's going on, Thunder Beast, uh, you are uh, sort of like catching up. Yeah. You know, spe speed's always an issue with you, but you're you're catching up to the others. Uh, you see the boardwalk up ahead. Um, where are you going to put your bulldozer? Uh, if I can get like within half a block, and like if there's um, there's always construction. It's Miami. They're building everything up right now. It's the '80s. Uh, so we'll find a spot, and I'll uh hop out. You know, I'm sure I have a change of street clothes. Um, put those on. Uh, but I'll tell uh Thunder Beast because I know he time like, hey, uh, I'm gonna go find the others. Radio's on. You know that. But you can chill out here. Go explore the beach if you want do whatever you need to do and thunderbot will probably either go vroom vroom and like find a park and chill and whatever a thunder beast would do to read a book um so, totally or uh you know uh, head down to the beach whatever he would need it would need to do i just love okay. the idea of a bulldozer just slowly crawling down the beach <laughs> just just taking in the scenery <laughs> Not exactly inconspicuous, but it is a wonderful image. Uh, but no, you're you're looking for another sort of construction site, which is this the cardboard box to your solid snake, as it were. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll make like that reference as many just times under the overpass today. or something, and I'll put out some road cones and sure, sure, sure. But but no, you actually managed to spot some construction that's going on on the boardwalk uh, pretty early on. Um, there is uh, there is this sort of like massive complex. Um, uh, you're not really familiar with it. You don't know the area that well. But there's this huge building, really tall. Um, and at the top of it, there's this big four-pointed neon star. Um, yeah. And you see that there's some activity. Like, a lot of people are coming in and out of it. But then there's, like, an addition to the building that is currently under construction. And there's a bunch of, like, work vehicles in that area. So you sort of, like, spot that as a good potential, like, location to stash um. Thunder Beast for the time. Thunder Beast will like recognize that and head over and like slowly change and start looking for scrap metal and pieces that he needs to help his friends uh, rebuild themselves. Uh, and he'll ping like Belladonna free play and turbo and be like, I here's the street corners. If we can meet up, that's great. Um, uh, Randy is headed down to go see or try to meet up with you all. And I think he's. I'm going to take some time to myself, but whenever you're ready, I'm finding some scrap for y'all. Okay, so, so you, you you set up uh, you, this construction site, which is, by the way, empty. Yeah. Work is done for the day. They probably stopped at, like, two. Um, and, uh, uh, like, as a imp like impromptu med bay for robots, yeah. essentially, where you're, like, getting all your supplies in order. Yep. Um, you're kind of cannibalizing a lot of what they may have needed for the construction of this site, but they're not going to know until fun. tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we can yeah. leave them so, a couple quarters. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet corn dog money. Uh, you, uh, okay, cool. So you, you sort of like are, that's what Thunder Beast is doing. And Randy's uh, will hop Randy out. Randy heads, yeah. Pat him on Randy's the tire down the boardwalk. head on down to the boardwalk. Cool, cool. Um, so... Uh, as as Randy is walking out of the construction site and heading to the boardwalk, um, you see like a handful of guys walking into this place, which now that you're a little closer to it and out of your own vehicle, you can hear like the music thumping inside. This is clearly like a club and it's already kind of like going. It's like happening in there. 
um uh, the door like briefly opens the music gets louder for a second um and you see like these this is like a group of like shady looking characters like these we're wearing these like big like open collared shirts with you know cream colored suits or whatever like some real mafia kind of guys um and uh they are like walking into this place like laughing um and uh yeah they they sort of disappear inside uh you can tell that this is like a popular spot but yeah. it must be friendly to the less than reputable uh if if guys like that are are uh, calling it their their place of uh, entertainment um but either way you're not going in there you you were heading to the boardwalk so you head out uh and head down the boardwalk towards your friends um uh uh we have bowie not bowie uh uh dixon dixon, dixon you are uh coming from the other side um you approach the boardwalk uh seems like based on the radio chatter your friends are meeting on foot in human form um so what are you going to do with your vehicle what's your plan so um basically once we are parked like close to the boardwalk like as planned uh dixon gets out has a look around <laughs> and heads off towards where uh towards the, so the thing is are you you guys at the boardwalk currently right that's uh hayes and and bowie so because we have the radio i should know approximately where you are and i head that way are you still like in the alley with <laughs> with <laughs> It's Free still play. Operation, um, what was it? Oh gosh, yeah. we didn't come up with the name. <laughs> oh, we didn't? We've done this before? Uh... Um, operation, operation, something about sheep. Oh. I... Sheep Fleecing coin? the sheep <laughs> again. Sheep, sheep coin. Operation like sheep, sheep coin. coin. Yes. <laughs> operation sheep what? Sheep coin. <laughs> Sheep coin, sheep coin. I see. Doge coin. <laughs> Amazing. I was like, it does sound like a cryptocurrency. Uh, okay, yeah. Operation so, Sheep Coin is well underway. Yeah. So I'm basically heading to where they are, hoping against hope they haven't gotten into trouble yet, because <laughs> as, as lucrative as it is, there's definitely going to be trouble. <laughs> I mean, yeah. in theory, Operation Sheep Coin has to start wrapping up so that we can get our droids to the med bay so they can start getting yeah. repairs. Yeah, we're like starting to cut off the line and be like, all right, all right, we, we got one 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 more game and then, then uh, this alleyway extravaganza is going to wrap up. Oh, yeah. man, maybe you all could come back next Saturday to try your hand at Impossible Sheep Coin game. <laughs> yeah, that's um, bull, man. This game is and total ripoff. So, so, so one question, one question for Emerson, right? Um, okay, hang on. Before I continue, uh, there's a message from John. Oh. Oh, it sounds like we made our goal. Amazing, awesome. everybody. We are at a thousand dollars. That is so cool. <laughs> awesome work, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Man, that's a hell of a day. That's fantastic. Yeah, so cool. I'm so glad we okay, got so there. Okay, so a question for Emerson about how the the bond works, right? Yeah. So, if I understand correctly, the command droids are in principle in contact with each other 24/7 because of how their setup is, their radio wave setup is. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, like the command droids and the pilots are like constantly connected. Yeah. And the four of you. The eight, I should say the eight of you are also currently in like a closed loop constant okay. connection. So, so but you have your own I internal am, conversations. Yeah, exactly. But I am hearing what uh, Hayes and Bowie are after. <laughs> so as I hear them trying to wrap up, I'm like, I'm starting to run because I always know that if there's a trouble, if there's a trouble, it always comes at the, at the climax at the end. <laughs> so my goal right, is to right. get that in time. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Project cool. Sheepcoin has yet to really stick the landing, <laughs> but you know, practice makes perfect. And I like to think that free play like changes the aesthetic of like the title thing that's at the top of the arcade, and it actually has like a sheep that's like hopping <laughs> over a coin. Like that's the game, like Sheepcoin. Amazing. Um, so here's the thing: like various timing, uh, you guys, all, like the two of you, have been running this scheme for a while. 
uh, Ran uh randy had like uh, thunder beast went more or less directly there but was traveling more slowly and then randy came towards you uh turbo uh and dixon took the long way around but he's also much faster so you guys are all kind of the two of you are kind of converging on operation sheep coin at roughly the same time um oh, they're at it again <laughs> Look, um, man, I and get yeah, it. it's a hard game. You just have to keep trying. We'll be back next week. It's a total <laughs> ripoff, man. This this game is is a sham. It's I mean, okay it's if you don't. Yeah, it's okay if you don't have the skill, bruh. You know, we're all learning on our own journey. <laughs> oh, I well, got if skill. I can, if I can beat it, then you should be able to. You think I don't have skill? And oh, he, he like game yet. he take he takes like a butterfly knife out of his pocket and starts <laughs> flipping it around. <laughs> I got all kinds of skill, man. You don't even know who yeah, I am. I... <laughs> oh my right. god, cops! Everyone scatter! <laughs> <laughs> I can roll good hustle if I need to. <laughs> please do, please do. Active good hustle, please. Yes, I feel like this has also been something that has been used before. <laughs> <laughs> I got a seven, so I may not be too convinced. <laughs> okay. Can we help and say, oh no, the cops, and maybe, oh, can um, Belladonna bring up some flashing blue and red lights from oh, the background? Snap. I don't uh, know yes. if that's something she can do, but. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll allow it in the in this case. You sort of like flash your, your headlights different colors. You're an Infiltron. You can kind of like change your appearance as needed. Uh, so you, you sort of like flash some some colored lights in the distance from from where uh your uh lamborghini is uh and uh he's like oh man cheese it and he like runs <laughs> down the alley <laughs> uh and and uh, you manage to get out of the situation with this kid um <sighs> next time do and that the four of you are together earlier. what was that next time do that a little earlier in the day Look, we we're bored. We had to do something. Got you a corn dog. I, I thank you. <laughs> Dixon comes around the corner to see yeah. the corn dogs being passed out in an alleyway. <laughs> yeah, but Dixon basically just puts his head, uh, his face in his hands because he's like, <laughs> yeah, at least, Good for you at to least finally show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard it all before. Is there a corn dog for me as well? <laughs> You know it, dude. And I like pass you a corn dog. Yeah, I grab it and put it on my mouth. Dixon grabs it, puts it in the mouth. <laughs> just chews down, chows down. I love it. Yeah, just four kids enjoying some corn dogs in an alley. Uh, With their weirdly expensive vehicles around them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, your other than uh, Atari, other than free play, like your vehicles are not all immediately with you. Um, uh, Turbo is parked out uh, in a parking lot nearby. Uh, obviously, uh, Thunder Beast is over by the that club that you saw. Um, and uh, I assume, I guess Belladonna is probably pretty close, but you had to like find a spot to park nearby, close enough for the lights to be visible, but not the vehicle itself from the alleyway. So your vehicles are a little bit scattered to the high winds right now, uh, except for the arcade machine, which is, of course, right here, a critical part of Operation Sheep Coin. How could we forget? Uh, and yeah, the four of you have just kind of like a moment to cool down. Um, so what did it's all kind of like the adrenaline is sort of like pouring out of your body. What was that? What did we get? I'm just talking to everyone. Like, what did we grab? I'm not sorry. I, again, I was dealing with the front door at the time. Yeah, dealing with the front door you didn't have to open. Um, I've got my duffel bag. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so, uh, so what did so Dix we get? I know it was like so intel I, or information. So, or... Yeah. So I think Dixon should be able to answer this question, but me, Shalel doesn't remember <laughs> what it was. But because because yeah. uh, because Turbo is the Alphatron, the technically like is anyone else an Alphatron here? No. I no, because technically, so. if I remember right, Alphatrons are kind of the leader of the cell. So yeah. I yeah. should Dixon. So Turbo should know. Dixon should also know, but I don't remember what it was. So I would have to ask Emerson to tell us what exactly yeah, yeah. it was. No, absolutely. I mean, you guys all know what it is. It's it is it's something called a magnetic code sequencer. Uh, basically, it's it's like a a metal box 
Um, inside there is some contained data. There are like various logs. You don't know exactly what's on the data. You were just sent to get it. You don't know, like that's for the code breakers back uh, when you're with the resistance to worry about. What you know is that it's like a metal box that's inside a black duffel that you brought with you to sort of like stash it in. Uh, and Hayes is the one who currently has it on her person. Okay. I mean, like the other command droids are going to deal with it. So we just have to wait until they get a hold of us. That's true. What? What do we want to do till then? Um, I also I other command droids. Uh, Thunder Beast can ping you his locate or tell you his address where he's at. If I know there was <laughs> looking at free play, I know there was like laser cannon scorch marks up and down the side. Like ah, if that needs to be helped, I mean he's he's more than willing to fabricate and help. You know, repair. A little so, um, eight bit thumbs up appears on the screen. <laughs> and like a little like plus sign like healing box like with little sparkles <laughs> around it like Ding! yeah so dixon essentially goes personal with with turbo and says turbo do you expect me to believe that there wasn't a backup to the backup of the backup plan <laughs> we have done this a few times before it always goes south <laughs> so well, then statistically, there wasn't a backup to the backup to the backup if it always goes south because someone loves to bust in for no reason. Who can knows we, what's going on? Can we just put this behind you? I'll, I'll get you slushy. Look, look, look. You want to fight? You can fight. First, let's get out of here. We get home, we then you fight to your heart's here. content. <laughs> We're fine. We're just fine. Everything's fine. Then let things be not fine until you get to uh, get back home, and then you can be fine. <laughs> Bowie's just slowly eating a corn dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, the question is: Would Turbo know if there is like a backup, backup, backup extraction point? <laughs> Given that we've already missed one, and probably the backup point. So, so there's no specific extraction point. Um, like, hopefully the Resistance knows where you are, they're at least tracking your location, and are gonna get support to you as soon as possible. Um, so really, again, you just need to survive. You just need to sort of, like, not attract yeah. attention as best you can, uh, and, and make it through what might be a couple of hours of, of time before your, uh, exfiltrators get to you. Yeah. Uh, so, you can... Chill out on the boardwalk, enjoy your corn dogs, get a slushy. That's these are all valid things to do in terms of mission parameters right now. Yeah. Let let's get free play onto Belladonna, Operation Tech Entrepreneur, and get them to Thunder Beast to be able to get healed up and I think that's we'll a good just play yeah. roll. Okay. okay. Sounds good. You guys uh so I look at Hayes and Bowie and say, you guys make sure to use the uh, the, uh, the, what's it called? The cloak, when you're on your way. <laughs> there. And, uh, I'll take Randy with me. <laughs> okay. Because, if I'm not, is the Lamborghini a two-person car? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> uh, yes? Lamborghini is, is a two-person car. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. I don't think there's a back seat. Forgive yeah. me, I'm I'm not uh, yeah. Sean, Sean Jaffe, the esteemed uh, primary creator of Command Droids. I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of all cars <laughs> and airplanes ever made. I do my best. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, look at, I look at I Randy it. and say, yeah. I look at Randy and say, look, I know we don't get along, but keep it till we get out of here. <laughs> hey, man, I it's all for the team, right? Uh, honey, are you going to be okay? Oh, I'm fine. All right, Dixon, it sounds like I'm riding with you. <laughs> okay. Bowie, yeah, let me I'm... know if anything happens. <laughs> In a narrator, but it was not fine. <laughs> uh, uh, so you guys kind of have your plan. You're going to go get your bots healed. You you sort of figure that out. You're finishing your corn dogs. At this point, I'm going to call for a perception check from everybody. So that's going to be your highest passive stat between either of your characters. Uh, go ahead and give that a roll highest for me, and I'll just go down the line. Yes, highest passive. Okay, hang 10. Ooh. Let me see. Just a minute, that's four. So I got okay. a 14. I got a 20. I got a, I got a 15. I also got a 15. 
Wow, really good. Uh, who got the 20 in that? I did. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, you, uh, like, you spot something. As you're, like, heading out of the alley, um, you see uh, this, this cop car um, sort of, like, pulls up along the boardwalk and parks illegally, um, as cop cars are wont to do. <laughs> Uh, and, and, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, like this, this cop, this guy in a Hawaiian shirt, a uh, big mustache comes out. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> and, and he's just sort of like scanning the crowd. He's looking around. It looks like he's looking for something. Um, and you uh, kind so, of like spot him and it kind of like trips your, your danger sense a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so does Dixon recognize him from the cop, from the stop? <laughs> you, you got a 15, right? Yeah. So you didn't actually see this guy. Only, uh, okay. uh, I'm so sorry. Randy has seen yeah, him yeah. so far. Uh, and I'll do the uh, scratch my head. Uh, don't look now, but we may have some uh, parental blues uh, having some issues. And I'll like nudge. Don't look over there, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dixon essentially drops down, crouches down to stay be below the crowd line. <laughs> essentially. Oh, that's clever. Cop yes. is no problem, and, and basically he he grabs Randy and starts making his way to the to the to the to Turbo and says, "Randy, you're in the driver's seat. I know I'm driving, but you're in the driver's seat." <laughs> I can handle that. No one else should drive anyway. Yet, yeah. let's see what this thing can do. <laughs> Way to bring in that character trait. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, doesn't ever let anyone else drive. What yep. an annoying thing for a boyfriend to have. Uh, yeah. Uh, so so you guys are, are like heading into the crowd, heading for your vehicle. Unfortunately, the cop is like in a position to see you guys. So you're trying oh. to like avoid him and stay hidden amongst the crowd. You're doing your absolute best. Here, pull um, into here, and I'll grab him by the, the the shoulder, and we'll duck in between an open store, like a bodega or something, and try to hide between the shelves. Okay, cool. You guys be cool out there. Uh, so uh, you guys are, are doing your best to sort of avoid the attention of this cop, uh, who, by the way, just to clarify, once Randy points him out to you, Dixon, you recognize him as the guy that came after you. You know yeah. that it is that guy. Yeah. Um, and uh, so... Uh, you're you're sort of like trying to find a good place. Uh, we're gonna have a, you guys both make rolls. I think this is gonna be a uh, a passive uh, street outlaw for Dixon. Okay. That's um, my and highest then... passive street outlaw. Okay, yeah. Cool. Um, and then uh, that'll be a passive good hustle for Randy. Okay. I got him. Get a lot of mileage at a good hustle. I am. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit! Shoot. I got five. five. Got two, it. Two, one, one. So I'm sorry, a six. Okay. Not brilliant. Yeah, one point a little roll myself. <laughs> it can't. Yeah, I yeah I got an eight. So <laughs> that's I think average for three days. Uh, what kind of establishment did you say you were trying to duck into? Like a bodega, just a little a convenience bodega. store, yeah. like you know, snack shop on the thing. Absolutely, snack shop on the boardwalk. There's plenty of them. Um, and you, you sort of like duck into this place. Uh, are you trying to make it seem like you just normally walking in there? Are you like running to yes. run out the back? What's your, what's your, what's the vibe when you walk into this place? Probably to walk in normally, but then kind of like turn and like, if there's blinds, do the typical open the blinds and close them. And so you subtle, open not subtle. Right, so you you head into this snack shop. Luckily, there's a, a bunch of customers in here right now, so you're you're, you're not like immediately in in the like sights of yeah. the cashier. Uh, but you sort of like like peek through the blinds, um, and you see that cop in the Hawaiian shirt, and he is walking straight towards the door of the bodega that you're in with like an intention in his walk that is almost Terminator like. <laughs> Have you seen this boy? Uh, Dixon, yeah. we gotta bounce. Yeah. Uh, okay, quick question for Amazon, again, uh, about how the bond works. If I remember right, we get superhuman abilities. Not like not like superpowers, 
but our physical abilities are boosted to the max or slightly above the max for humans. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's partially to justify, and I guess I haven't really gone into this, but you guys are all a little bit banged up. Um, mm -hmm. It's not it's not necessarily showing. You're not, like, openly bleeding yeah. or anything. I would have told you if you were. But you do kind of share a link with your commander. You only have one set of health levels, right? Yeah. So, so it's like Dragonheart style. If the robot gets hurt, the human feels it, and vice versa. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the situation. Yeah. So I'm like... Yeah, after getting a little busted up by 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 the com by the nemes nemesis commander, uh, I'm definitely not up for trying to climb up walls today, <laughs> which is one okay. possible way to get out. We'll have to go sure. through the back door. <laughs> okay. Uh, if that's a, I'm fine with that. But as soon as he says we're going out the back door, I'm going and once again, once I will notice that he's probably banged up since that that is our physical description. I'm gonna start because he was shot when he tried to barrel roll. Um, if I see like a first aid kit or like some Advil or like and, and some alcohol wipes and some gauze and just kind of grab them and tuck them as we bo boot out. Okay, so you are you are robbing this convenience store, just to clarify. I, it's not robbing. It's free hand association. I intend to give it back. A long term right. borrowing commitment. Sure, sure, sure. Coin. Yeah. No, you, my... You'll give them back the bandages and alcohol right um used. wait how much did this, so on, on the way out i'm like how much did this come up to like what what did you take how much did it come to on approximately in 80s dollars probably like 475 <laughs> yeah so I... what i do is on the way out like as we're on the way out i just pull out a five dollar bill and like drop it on the floor <laughs> so it's like equal exchange <laughs> We're not okay, sure. <laughs> I, I I appreciate that, and and perhaps the cashier will appreciate that once he finds it. Um, but uh, but my I have a question, which is, does does this get go noticed? So the cashier, like yeah. I said, he's a little bit distracted. There's a lot of people in the store, uh, but he is somewhat on alert for being ripped off by teenagers, mm -hmm. as you might yeah. expect. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and give me a passive good hustle against uh, his times. perception check? Uh. Four and four is eight plus six. That'll be 14. And three okay. is 17. Incredible. Uh, yeah, so you managed to uh, avoid the attention of this guy completely. He's like talking to somebody facing the other direction. Does not notice you grabbing these supplies uh, and heading out through the back uh, into the alley yeah. behind this store. Uh, folks, we are roughly at our halfway point. Uh, if I'm correct, our, we're sort of scheduled for three hours and have an hour of overflow. So our sort of hard end out time is 10. But I think that we could call this about the halfway point of our session. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take a quick 10 minute bio break. Everybody oh, okay. hydrate, use the bathroom. I need to refill my water and uh, we will be back here in 10 minutes, everyone. Awesome. Thank okay. you so much for tuning in. Yeah, Thank you so much for your donations. I'm so glad that we yeah, got well to done, a thousand. Everyone. That's well fantastic. Done. Yeah.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are uh, playing a game for y'all uh, right now. We are playing Commandroids, A World Transformed. We have eight characters, four players, uh, uh, four mighty transforming robots and their teenage human companions uh, battling the evil Nemesite Inquisition, the bad robots from an alien world. Um, and uh, just to recap for anyone who's just joining us, or also for our players, to remind everybody what's going on here. The four Symbatrons uh, here, uh, Thunder Beast, Free Play, Belladonna, and Turbo, are, are with their pilots all on a mission. Uh, the mission is essentially already over. We started uh, at the end of the mission with a successful extraction of uh, some data, uh, a... a uh, I've already forgotten what it's called. It is called a magnetic code sequencer. That's what it's called. Um, they have a magnetic code sequencer containing data vital to the Symbatron resistance that they've managed to smuggle out of an underground nemesite base in the Everglades outside of the city of Miami. Uh, they were pursued down the highway by an army of enemy vehicles. Uh, there was some fighting, some shooting. Uh, they managed to get away. Uh, and uh, then headed to the boardwalk to lay low for a while, waiting for uh, backup to show up and exfiltrate them out of this uh, terrible place uh, where the nemesis seem to be in control. Uh, however, they have been dogged by a particular police officer, rather suspicious gentleman uh, in aviator shades and a Hawaiian shirt uh, driving a Porsche cop car uh that uh has been after you at various points and who is now on foot pursuing uh randy and dixon as they travel uh through a convenience store grabbing some medical supplies along the way uh and they are heading towards uh the parking lot a new sort of like construction development near a club uh nearby uh, on the boardwalk uh to do some repairs on their bots uh, but it seems as though a new challenge has presented itself in the form of this cop. And we'll get back to those two in just a second. But first, I want to check in with Belladonna and Freeplay. Um, so you you are, both of your commandroids are super close by. Uh, you don't have to kind of like go any kind of distance. Uh, you can kind of just go around the corner. Uh, and the, the cop, you see him sort of like, may be lining for uh, your other friends and you see them like ducking into a convenience store they are clearly aware of the fact that they're being pursued as well what are you guys doing uh, we have the vital info so it feels like kind of a bad idea to go in there yeah, huh. randy randy and dixon have been in this kind of situation before they've they've got this we can let's loop around to where um, a Thunder Beast is, and that way, if they can just make it to us, we can take on this police dude. Well, we don't even have to take him on. We could just go invisible again, hop in Belladonna, and call it a day. Also true. If we can just, if we can just get them. Yeah, yeah. Let's try that. So I think so we're just gonna okay. make our way. Cool. Um, how is, uh, free play, uh, so, so, and I guess you got in, so, like, it, the car is close enough that you can get free play to the car without much trouble, so that's fine, um, but the car is located somewhere visible, right? Like, uh, you, you kind of unloaded this, this arcade machine. People saw you doing it, but didn't assume it was anything suspicious. Um, however, going invisible in the middle of a crowded boardwalk is a little suspicious. So mm. tell me how you're gonna handle the fact that there's people like everywhere. And it's it's also like the sun has come down and there are people like way more people now. Everyone is like sort of out walking on the boardwalk. People came back from the beach and they're just sort of like filtering about going in and out of stores and restaurants. It is becoming kind of a madhouse here. So we'd kind of set up um, free play tied on top of Lamborghini um, early or Belladonna earlier. Um, so I think totally. what we do is just get free play loaded back up, tied down, and then we just drive down that alleyway again, turn a corner, and then just keep waiting until we hit that empty spot. Then we go invisible and start working. Okay, so there. 
Unfortunately, that alley is too narrow to actually get your Lamborghini through. That's why you had to unload on the street and Got why you were it. like around the corner. Um, there's also stuff back there. Uh, so, so you can't drive into the alley. You can't drive into that alley anyway. You could try to find another one. So if we're working with narrower alleys, what we could try is getting to another alley uh, turning into a robot, tucking um, the arcade machine under the arm, and then going invisible, and then escaping down the alley. <laughs> um, so... Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I can, like... That's narrower! It, it sure is narrow, and I can, like... I can... Can I be inside of free play when free play is, like, an arcade machine? Or is that all taken up by like, or can I only like be inside like mecha pilot when I'm in like you the You can only be inside form? when when you're when you're piloting. Yeah. Gotcha. But you can be in. Oh, go for it. But if you're just holding on to the arcade machine and Gerwalk form, I can be inside it, just kind of hanging out, <laughs> and then we all go invisible, <laughs> and then you can use your other hand to scoop up Dixon. And Randy. Yeah, uh, and then we're just an invisible robot on the boardwalk. We do <laughs> I have, see no problems. We do have one no helpful notes. item oh, no. that was given before break, so... If helpful item? Them. We don't need helpful items. We have a great plan. <laughs> I, I agree, but we do have one on the table. I, I'm excited. I, I want to be cared by a robot. I don't know about you. Incredible. The helpful uh, item is one singular bit of impulse control, but we don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> I got. One I know what the helpful item is. With. So, so Belladonna, as an infiltron, you know this is the kind of thing that you do. You infiltrate places. You do extraction missions. You've got tools on hand for that. You have a device. You didn't have to actually end up using it in the uh, in the base because by the time there was attention on you, there was no choice but to flee. Um, uh, but you have this like little holographic projector disc kind of a thing that you can like, it's a one-time use, you can toss it out and it'll like project a programmed image into an area that should fool most observers for like a minute. You might be able to use that here or maybe you want to save it. That's up to you. Well, no, cause we could use that. <clears throat> Is the Lamborghini small enough to back into the out, not drive anywhere, just get between two buildings. Um, I think you can kind of like pull partly into the alley, like getting again, it's too narrow to get the full car in, but I think you can kind of like get your butt in there a little bit if that's the goal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hollow thing, chuck it pretty dang far. Um, and then I want holograms of puppies. puppies yes i want everyone to be so distracted by the cutest puppies they have seen in their entire lives just a parade of cute puppies parades of puppies <laughs> and then we're gonna turn okay. into a giant robot we're gonna go invisible we're gonna pick right. up our friends and then we're gonna go down the alleyway all totally reasonable things that you guys want to do <laughs> did i tell you i'm highly unreasonable <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you last time I jumped through a helicopter? <laughs> I, so I heard. Uh, okay. All right. Cool. This is what you're doing. Uh, you you quickly interface with the holodisc um, and you start to like program it using your uh, your own code interface. Go ahead and give me a active uh, source code role uh, to create a convincing illusion of a puppy parade. So that's 15. I... <laughs> How bad. cute are these puppies? I'm so excited. On a scale from like 1 to 20, we're going 15 cute. Like very cute. You know, like I'll take very 15 high cute. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, just like in a slightly different direction from where you guys need to disappear to, uh, you uh, like create this illusion of uh, a fleet of just like loose dogs uh appear, loose young dogs appears and starts like tearing down the boardwalk 
and like some people are like a little freaked out by this they're like ah dogs like suddenly but other people are like oh, look how cute they are where's their owner and like just like various like comments that you're sort of hearing in the background as you guys like you get as close as you can to that alley um you wait for the moment when you feel like the most people aren't looking and then you quickly zoom into the alley robot form grab the arcade machine arcade machine transforms into an arcade machine with arms and legs around uh bowie uh you get him under your arm like a football um and you whoosh, activate your stealth field uh and you are now a giant robot holding an arcade machine with arms and legs both of you are invisible and you are in the, like an alleyway of a boardwalk um so that's happening yeah yeah that yeah that is an excellent description of where we currently are in this moment yeah great awesome and then uh where are what's now what's what's next <laughs> well clearly i have another arm where i need to pick up more friends <laughs> I just, I, I need to know where this is going. So you've got a couple of miles. Between... <laughs> Sorry. One second. You got a couple of miles between you and the club where uh, Thunder Beast's like medical setup is. Um, and uh, so you could get to that, try to get to that somehow. There are also your other friends who are like in human form like physically walking through a bodega and like into alleys and like trying to lose this cop um uh, i do also want to point out if you if, if i'm sorry for interrupting but we have our uh, i do have to get turbo along with this like you can probably grab it and run but turbo is going to be stuck pretty much not not, not something dixon would do <laughs> like, yeah right yeah for sure uh okay so so yeah but I, again i i kind of need to know what your plan that, is there that's fair so Real far time. we're heading in a direction uh, we sure are hayes is a much the, better planner than i am and and the direction that that is is uh what, what? i think over the comms mm. um bowie will say hey uh dixon randy do y'all need a pickup, or should we just go to where uh, Thunder Beast is? Cause we got a a ride. <laughs> Thunder Beast is, I would say Thunder Beast. You guys have more critical data. Don't follow us right now. I agree. I agree. You keep the data safe. Right. We will focus on keeping the data safe. And inconspicuous. <laughs> hey, we're invisible. Like... We're inconspicuous. No, 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 no. This is true. We're invisible. No, no, no. We're, we're invisible. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry, no, no, don't worry no, no. about it. Like, worry. Like, like when 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 Bowie says that, like, it takes me like a couple of takes. I'm like, wait, what? Belladonna is cloaked, and the crowds are distracted. That's all you need to know. We'll head to the. We'll head towards Thunder Beast. Oh, we're going through a tunnel. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just to lay your options out here, you want to head towards Thunder Beast. That makes sense. Uh, your options are you walk along the boardwalk, which is full of people, as a giant invisible robot. Okay, that's one. That's option A. All right. Okay. You could you could sort of and that's the only way that's direct, right? Um, because either you're on the the road for the boardwalk, which has a ton of cars on it, or you're on the walkway, which is has a ton of people. That is the direct path towards this club. Um, you could go out of your way in one of two directions. You could sort of like head inland a bit towards some of the less populated roads and stuff like that, and try to like sort of like sneak and not bump into anything or have a car crash into you, hopefully. Uh, you could also go in the direction of the beach. Uh, the beach is at this point mostly empty. It's dark out. Most people have sort of like come in. There's maybe a few stragglers out there, um, but uh, it's it is largely empty as well. And sort of like you could go under the boardwalk slash next to it uh, that way. So these are your two options that occur to you. Uh, which way do you want to head? 
So in the interest of not stepping on people, I think the beach is very practical. I okay. think the beach, I think the beach is really awesome. I do have a small question. How, I haven't been in Miami in a long time. How tall are all the buildings around us? Right. Uh, in this area, generally not too tall. Um, there are, there's no like high rises. You're not in Miami proper. Um, so, so fairly short, but uh, taller than any of you, except for uh, maybe Thunder Beast. So we could go by the beach, or we could try climbing up the side of the building and rooftop hopping until we get to an empty patch of road or something, and then turn back into a car and go to where Thunder Beast is. What spell is Alma's climb? Is there a climb stat? <laughs> I think also I the would... space class would matter for this, I think. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Huh. I guess we are pretty heavy, huh? I think yeah. the beach is our best option. Beach, beach it is, beach it is. Fun to consider, beach it is. Good idea, but beach is probably the better idea. <laughs> Bowie floats it, and then it's like, you know, beach. I am a little disappointed because I was very excited to have you fall through the roof of the very first building that you climbed up onto. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> saying that for another time. I mean, we kind of also, but that would be metagaming then, so we should definitely go with the yeah, beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. cool. So you guys head down to the sand um, and, and sort of like, you know, manage to weave through uh, the obstacles between you and there pretty easily, and you whoosh, down onto the sand, and now you're moving. Your invisible robot legs are making giant, like, <laughs> impressions in the sand. But luckily, there aren't any people here to observe for the time being. Someone will come across these eventually, and I'll have to find some way to explain it. But we uh, that is... story later. Right, that is not your problem. Uh, so you, uh, like, head down, uh, down the beach under the boardwalk in their direction. Uh, so... We're gonna uh, jump back to you guys in a moment, but let's go over to uh, Thunder Beast, uh, or I should say, uh, Randy and Dixon, uh, who are uh, on foot, huffing it away from this cop. Um, so you uh, like duck out of the back of this bodega. Um, I don't know that they call them bodegas in Miami in the mid 80s, but yeah. that's what I call them. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you you uh, head out of this uh, uh, convenience store. Um, are you going in the direction of the club? Are you going the opposite way? Uh, wh where are you headed? I guess towards you want to go turbo, towards Turbo, I think. right? Towards yeah. Turbo. Okay, cool. And, and on the way, like, as we're going, I'm going to, I'm going to catch Randy up on the fact that I was actually stopped by the cop and gunned it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, the thing is, oh, though, okay. Randy, the thing is, at the time, I didn't think he was a nemesite, but now I'm not too sure. Oh, that I, I have not put that together. That's oh. so. I mean, this is the first time you're seeing him, but this is the second time I'm seeing him. So I'm really not sure at this point. As we're huffing and like stopping to take a breath, should we go in a different direction? We we don't want to lead him back to the source code, right? We don't have the source code. I think we are good. Exactly. <laughs> but, so if, but... if we lead them somewhere else, Thunderbeast can patch them up. Um, I... I'll follow your lead, boss. Let's let's do it. Yep. First, let's get to Turbo. Then we'll see. <laughs> How fast are you moving? Good point. <laughs> uh, we are moving about seventy-five percent of what we can do at a flat out, which would probably put us at pretty at sprinting speed for the average human. But I don't know about the cop. Sure. Um. So you you sort of like tear pretty fast yeah. uh, down this alleyway. Uh, you're heading towards where Turbo's parked, um, and at the end of the alleyway, uh, somewhat far away, you see uh, the uh, Porsche 911 911 <laughs> pulling in front of the alleyway and blocking it. Um, give me a perception check, both of you. Your highest right. passive stat. Uh, hang on a minute. I have to cross check that, but I think that's a three for me. You know, highest passive is four. Okay. I got a seven on four dice. A 
Four great. Dice. That's a nine for me. <laughs> yeah. A nine? Okay. Better than you roll be better. Ultra. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it's a rough roll. I think even our last roll wasn't that great. You were a five, I was an eight. Uh, yeah, that's also true. <laughs> we, we probably don't work that well together. Goes with the story. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, but nine, nine actually was good enough. Um, so, uh, uh, Dixon, you see... Um, like there, there's someone driving the car when it first pulls up. You see like the mustachioed cop like behind the wheel, but he's not like moving much. And then the holographic image of him like briefly flickers yeah. and you catch it. Uh, that car is driving itself. Yeah, okay. So And they are cut, we, cutting just, you off yeah. and just you can to... hear the cop tearing through the store behind you. Yeah, so two questions out of character. One, uh, can command droids transform if they are not in direct contact with their pilots uh no they cannot that's what okay. they need the pilots for yeah so basically even if we run up to the cop car the most they can do is kind of run us over but they can't exactly change into this into a that's true into yeah okay fair enough Accurate. second thing, i mean listen uh, there's a lot that a car can do to humans <laughs> but but sure it's limited <laughs> but it's what like it's what humans can imagine cars can do not suddenly change into like a big robot and grab it. accurate okay. accurate uh second thing would would we would the four of us know the more uh extreme things that nemesites do to their human pilots <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as far as you know, like, uh, you know, you guys have very, like, close-knit relationships with your pilots, generally speaking, uh, but the Nemesites, they, they they just use humans yeah. like batteries, basically. Yeah. Um, but we know uh, about... Not to get too deep into the lore, but, like, yeah. you know, a lot of Nemesite pilots are, are like, these techno-revenants that are barely alive, mm -hmm. uh, exactly. and they're just being piloted by the Nemesite. But, so, so if, given that we know that, and given that the cop is coming after us, and from what I've seen of his behavior, I can as I would like to know if I, it's possible for me to assume that this is a collaborator rather than just a puppet. Uh, interesting question. Um, I, I would say that you've had enough experience with the Nemesites to know that their even their techno revenants are fairly convincing as like human beings, you, you, like. That guy could be the pilot of the Nemesite. It's not, okay. they don't, they're not all obviously like drones. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact Turbo and I'm going to ask Turbo. Dixon asked Turbo, Turbo, do you have access to that other missile in your car form? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, I need you to come up, right? Come up, because there's a nemesite in front of us. I need you to create an opening for us. There's also, I think, a collaborator behind us. We'll handle him. There's two of us. We can handle him, but we need you to open a pot. Incredible. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> uh, awesome. So, so, okay. So, just to, like, describe the, the positioning here. Yeah. Uh, you guys are in the alley. The cop is coming through the store, and he's going to pop out behind you in a moment. <laughs> The the, uh, the the Porsche cop car is blocking the alley in front of you, and then beyond that, around the corner, is where you have Turbo parked. Yes. Um, so, so Turbo is, like, coming now in the direction of that vehicle, um, and, like, a, a little, like, missile rack just pops out of, like, the spoiler of your car, um, <laughs> and, like, aims across your hood towards this other vehicle, and are you... Firing the missile? Yeah, no, so, uh, no, if I understand right, uh, let's see. The alleyway is straight ahead, right? The cop car is blocking it. Turbo is coming around from the side. Yes, right? that's correct. So Turbo from the side see and us. also yeah. past the, the cop car, yeah. Yeah, so Turbo can't see us, essentially. At least from the angle he when he came turned around, yeah. So he what I'd us. like to do is I'd like to actually double back a bit so that we can essentially go against the cop, like give him a one-two punch, essentially both of us, like when he least expect it. And in the meantime, and use that momentum to like jump back and run up. And so we get further away from the blast radius while Turbo shoots the car. It's, it's, it's the nemesite, nemesite, essentially. 
Okay, so you you guys are going to double back to yes. like intercept the cop, and uh, Turbo is going to fire his missile yeah, at, at the cop him. Okay. at the nemesis. Yeah. Right. So that we are f as far away because the uh, entire idea is we don't want to be caught in the blast radius because even with the with the with the the what's it called with the with the boost we get from being bonded, I don't think humans can take a direct. <laughs> Blast <laughs> yeah, that's like, you, like you, to you put guys... this to, to put this into context, you were just over the comms, like, hey, to, like be inconspicuous, be stealthy. <laughs> also, hey Turbo, fire a missile. <laughs> fire the missile. <laughs> Let's take you guys think fire conspicuous, the but all right. So, all right. So there's there's one problem with this plan. Yes. One. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more. One that occurs yeah. to me immediately, which is that there are a lot of innocent bystanders around. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, Dixon wouldn't have thought about that. So, let me switch to Turbo in a bit, right? So, sure. uh, basically, yeah, you, 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 Turbo, Turbo goes by. He does pop up the rack and the missile comes out. At this point, well, I'm pretty sure the Nemesite notices. <laughs> like... Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The the, the but, nemesis, yeah. the the car like comes to life. Yeah. Uh, but instead of firing the missile, Turbo guns the engine and like tries to go, tries to T-bone it. If I'm not mistaken, is that possible? Ah, interesting. So okay, it's, it's a feint. Because Turbo is def Turbo is definitely not going to fire the missile because, like you said, they will not harm innocent humans. Sure. Doesn't mean they're then, going to harm the nemesite. <laughs> right. The, maybe the nemesite isn't thinking of that, not no, sort of like quickly enough. Yeah, and exactly. so the nemesite assumes that you are going to fire the missile. <laughs> a missile rack pops out, pops out. The car is like, oh crap. And, and like starts peeling out, trying to get like far away from this missile and dodge it, at least get into motion. Um, and uh, so you have sort of successfully fainted it. And you instead yeah. sort of try to like lose it. You like try to juke away. No. Is so the, the question is: Is the alley wide enough for the car for Turbo? I'm gonna say this one is just on a 50-50 basis of the two alleys yeah. I've described so far. So Turbo is essentially go the, the the main plan was for Turbo to T-bone the car, uh, T-bone the Nemesite. But because the Nemesite kind of dodged out of the way, yeah, it's Turbo moving is now. Turbo is going to change plans and go straight down the alley to pick up the guys. Okay, hell yeah, I love it. Yep. Um, okay, so so you veer off at the last second, drift into this alley, or you are going to. Yep. Let's say that that's all like sort of still pending for the other characters. Um, meanwhile, the nemesite peels off, and it's going to take him a second to realize you're not firing a missile exactly. at him. Um, but meanwhile, uh, so like Dixon and Turbo are kind of focused. Both of them are somewhat focused on on that task yep. and that exactly. sort of complex situation as it's playing out. So uh, it kind of comes to Randy to handle yes. the cop. Uh, so the this this cop like comes out uh, of the the back. He he pulls out like a massive automatic pistol uh, and levels it directly at you. Uh, what do you do? At me? Yes. Okay, I did it because if he was pointing it at um, Dixon, I would have, you know, well, pushed Dixon out of the way. It's happening it's like arc. it's he's yeah he's sort of about to aim at both of you guys, but he hasn't aimed. He hasn't if like succeeded there is yet. Distance the close, uh, and I don't know if we can use our proto voltage ourselves uh, since we are. I don't know how that works, and that's my bad. Um, if I can just boost myself and just tackle the cop. Okay, uh, yes, uh, that is a, a interesting question. Let me pull up your sheet real quick. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you. I'll give you. I'll let you. Uh, you get the uh, the plus one on strength, a okay. thing that you have there. Uh, so go ahead and give me a. I think it's Hardy Boy athlete. Uh, yeah, think? Hardy Boy athlete. That's perfect. Yeah. You're you're just shoulder checking him. Good. Oh, that's way better. Uh, 20, 6, 4, 5, and 4. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> wow. And I, and I'm thinking like a Goldberg spear, just kind of a... Like just yeah, plow absolutely. into him. Yeah. Totally. So here's what happens. 
you you like dive into this cop you tackle him you hit him right in the midsection he goes slamming into the wall and sort of like crumples on you somewhat um (laughs) the gun goes off in his hand wildly it doesn't hit anybody um but it fires uh and like you see some like plaster coming down from the adjacent building and obviously there's a loud ringing shot all of you hear it including like on the beach, invisible giant robot. <laughs> Somewhere in the distance, you hear an echoing gunshot. Um, and uh, yeah, but you've slammed this guy uh, into okay. the wall. Um, he's 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 definitely shaken him quite a bit. Uh, it's going to take him a second to sort of recover. Um, and uh, what is Dixon doing? So, like you said, because of the sudden changes with the Nemesite car, Dixon is kind of out of it. He's still kind of running, but. He's not there, like, mentally, right? But right. when the shot goes off, it's also around the time I think Turbo starts gunning down the alley. So Dixon kind of snaps back, kind of looks over his shoulder, runs up to Randy, grabs him up. Because it's a tackle, right? You're not exactly... Sta- are you still standing or are you, like... Kind of pinning him against the wall of- type yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, I, uh, so Dixon runs up, for good measure, clocks the cop on the jaw... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Grabs Randy and gets ready to gets ready for Turbo to pull up, essentially. Okay. So okay, cool. one question. Is the alley open? Like is it a true alley or is it a dead dead end alley? It it it's open in both directions. Okay. So Turbo basically comes up, pulls up, door pops open. Uh Dixon throws Randy in, jumps in after him. Awesome. Door closes, Turbo is the one that guns it. There's no one they're not actually sitting in the seat anymore. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> we're like halfway in it. feet out of the windows <laughs> yeah kinda. incredible uh well i mean that's probably what's happening with randy but yeah. for you you're so coordinated with turbo yeah. that you can you can kind of just like jump at the last minute and land right in the driver's seat it's not a problem for you okay. um uh so uh so like i will the... say yeah i yep. will say though that this is a little difficult for me because i'm not used to having uh like i'm used to a left hand drive system like driving on the left so that there's a little bit of an issue with where exactly the driver's seat is but for me it's just that i jumped in assuming that i threw randy in even if i jumped in if he's lying across both seats i can't exactly (laughs) jump into it (laughs) that's that's true absolutely either way you'll you'll get in there somehow and the car can drive whether or not you're at the wheel exactly so the turbo sets up we get ourselves sorted out yeah 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 cool so uh you uh like turbo like pulls up uh you guys uh sort of like have, this cop is dazed he just got slammed into a wall and then clocked in the face um and you guys dive into turbo yeah. turbo continues to speed along the alleyway um yeah. yes one question randy i'm probably not thinking about it but do you want to grab the gun <laughs> No, no, I probably wouldn't even think about it. Um, okay, fair enough. So he did we not lose to... the gun. He still yeah, has he did it not. in his hand. He still has yeah. so that's thing. Do we want to grab the gun? Just I wouldn't to make even sure he thought about it. it. Yeah, wouldn't have thought about it. I wouldn't it. have thought about it either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're probably thinking about it now yeah. because a- as you dive just... into this car and it tears off, you see him lowering the pistol and starting to fire in your yeah. direction at the back windshield of Turbo. Um, so Turbo, you are trying to avoid getting hit, but there's not really a lot of dodge space yeah. in the middle of this alleyway. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and ask you to make me a passive auto mech roll. Auto mech is two. Mech form. Yeah. Ah, That's two looks dice. Like, yeah, looks like uh, the DeLorean doesn't really... Uh, isn't really all that manoeuv- maneuverable. A seven. That's kind of what you have the fighter jet yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Need the balance here. Yeah. It's a seven. Okay, seven, not bad. Um, okay. Ooh. Wow. You do get two free rerolls, by the way, Emerson. From, oh, uh, I do? There's a request. There, is a, there is a request. That's one free reroll for each player, or reroll yeah. equivalent for each player, and two for the GM. There's oh, you don't say! By, by someone uh, called uh, Ted Pick. Fascinating, Ted Pick. because I just <laughs> got a five, and I'll go ahead and use one of my re-rolls on that. <laughs> that's fair. But that's better. That is a 15. So, 
<laughs> like there is a blast, and like this is like a uh, a desert eagle, like like a big heavy high caliber bullets, uh, like crashes through the the back windshield of Turbo, um, uh, Turbo and uh, Dixon take one yeah. more level of of wounds, yeah. um, and and sort of like buries itself uh in in the the uh the backs of or the back of one of the seats of the car it sort okay. of like meets its final resting yeah. place against the metal frame doesn't hit the pilots thankfully um but uh but he still manages to to get a shot off and and both of you feel it dixon you kind of like feel yeah, exactly. the, the, both, the wound both dixon and and turbo groan and dixon kind of hunches over us it's like not a headshot, but it's like upper body kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. and you're guy, already guy. wounded, so it's not yes. great. Um, I and you would probably start to panic. Just <laughs> are you hit? Oh gosh! Ah! Oh. And like trying to pull out the alcohol and you know, <laughs> put alcohol on an open wound. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, okay, cool. So you guys uh, are. Uh, pretty much free in the clear after that last shot the cop was able to take it just takes too long for the other car to like turn all the way around in traffic and like get back to pick him up i mean probably you assume that that is going to happen but by the time he he's back in his vehicle you're long gone uh yeah. you tear off down the side roads so one last thing dixon and turbo would like to come in here at the bottom I, dixon would like to ask turbo if turbo has so again we are, as humans, we are not exactly clear how commandroids work, but do commandroids have an IFF system? An identification friend of foe system, like a broadcast system? That... Oh, oh yeah. Uh, no, you, 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 I mean, are you asking if you can like detect nemesites yeah, no, so, like so, with so, radar? No, in, no, in general, uh, yes, no. So once you've met a nemesite, can you essentially mm. re-recognize that person is what I want to know. Yeah, sure. I mean, you could definitely tell what the vehicle is, uh, yeah. even if you didn't have any kind of system for it. Like, that particular yeah. Porsche cop car and that particular mustachioed cop are trouble. Like, uh, So the, the, the basic idea was uh, not not so... If it's Even if it's non-visual, if they are in a certain radius, would we be able to tell is no. what I'm looking for? No, 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 no. Okay. So no, no, that is not it's, something you can do. Okay, all right, yeah. So you do not have like a nemesite keep... detector, yeah. even if you've met yeah. them before. The other question would be, uh, would it be easier for uh, commandroids to, or uh, is commandroids are commandroids are the general race, right? Uh, so they're yes, called that's correct. Neutron... nemesites and symbatrons are both yeah. so commandroids. Would it be easier for nemesites and symbatrons to recognize other nemesites and symbatrons they've already met? So in a sense. Dixon may not always no recognize the car, but would Turbo do? Would be, Turbo be able to recognize it immediately? That a a, a vehicle is a nemesite, you mean? No, no. We have, this particular nemesite, if we run into it mm -hmm. or see it again, even slightly, would Turbo be able to realize? Yeah, sure. This but particular not with any kind of special system, just yeah. because yeah. you'd recognize it visually. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So sure. because because it's an because it's a command ride, command ride to command ride would be able to recognize on features easier than humans is essentially what I'm asking. That yeah. kind of. Thing. So that's totally reasonable. Okay. So all right. Um. So we just so I'm so Dixon is basically telling Turbo, please uh, like for the for the love of the gods, don't forget that guy. Keep an eye out for that guy because we still we are still not out of the woods yet. <laughs> okay. Right now we right now we are. Tied for, <laughs> we got one up on him last time. He got one on us this time. That he did. That he did. <laughs> Incredible. So, All right. I'm pretty sure uh, the so, game's still going. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we are going to jump forward a little bit here. Uh, you guys managed to get away and through the side streets over to the parking lot of uh, this club, uh, which you uh, recognize. Uh, you sort of end up driving in front of it a little bit more so than the bulldozer did because it's not as conspicuous for a DeLorean to, to pass a club. Um, and uh, and you see the big neon name of the club is the Southern Cross. Um, has a huge four-pointed star on the building. It's the tallest building in the area by a pretty long stretch. Um, and uh, you go past it and towards this little construction site um, that is closer to the beach. 
and uh, you uh, sort of like try to surreptitiously drive Turbo in into that construction site. Meanwhile, uh, uh, we've got Belladonna in your giant robot form, tromping along the beach. <laughs> um, you you pass like under one of the piers at one point, and like uh, like you like hit a beam, and there's like a loud clanging noise, and like a couple of teenagers that were making out scatter to the beach like cockroaches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, but you you manage to stay relatively undercover as you travel along the beach, and you get to this beacon in the sky, the uh, four-pointed star, uh, and the construction site nearby. Uh, you climb back up onto the road. Luckily, the construction site, as I said, it is closer to the beach. It is sort of like on the unpopulated end of this complex that this club is in. Um, so you're able to get in there without uh, having to like try to get past anybody. So the four of you find yourselves reunited once again, pilots and bots this time, uh, all sort of like hunkered down uh, amidst this construction site, uh, and you are here to do some repairs. Now, did we have? Am I mistaken, or did we have a health boost? We did have yes. a come in Still at one used. point. Yes. Yes. Help, we did have yeah. a help with yeah. Very beginning. So even though you you kind of worked for this as well, I don't want to take that away. Uh, we'll say that you, that uh, Thunder Beast did a really good job of sort of like assembling materials and getting stuff like charged up with proto voltage and like ready to like do some emergency repair procedures. Um, so uh, I'm gonna uh, assume that you get into that pretty much right away. Mm -hmm. Um uh go ahead and give me a uh let's say a active function roll. Um Dude. and, and I you use can my add the plus three dice. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So that and it's uh the function. Okay, so that's two, so a total of five. Five dice, yeah. Uh, Still a good pool. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, six and four is ten, plus four, two, and three. Eighteen total. Okay. Um, you do some quick emergency field repairs. Everybody, you can downgrade one damage level on your character. Um, you uh, you manage to get uh, everybody a little bit fixed up from their banged up state, which I, th I want to say Turbo was the most banged up at this point. Yeah, I had two. Uh, so yeah, you have three. So yeah, you're back down to two. So you're still not doing great. Um, but uh, but it's a far cry from uh, uh, the condition that you were in before you got repaired. Yeah. Um, this is happening. This takes a little time. Um, you're there for maybe like half an hour doing this. Uh, what are the humans doing during that time? Anyone can feel free to jump in here. Yeah, Dixon is out of it. Like three damage, even with all the boot, all the enhancements, like. And even after the repairs, that doesn't really carry over to the human body that well. So he's completely out Oh my out god, of it. did Turbo get shot? I, we were... Sh yes. Which, we were which shot time? At... We, got, we got shot twice. <laughs> so you had to be we a little more specific. Twice. <laughs> little more specific, please. Is there any way that I could use Makeover Queen to kind of work on... Dixon to just try and make him like look a little bit better to bandage him a little bit so he doesn't look like he's been beaten to to crap. Absolutely, uh, that that is totally a thing that you can do. Uh, so why don't you uh, go ahead and give me? Um, I think this we'll call this an active brain, an active underestimated brain check. have to remember how to math or i i actually I, actually i'm sorry i chose the wrong stat but i picked the right number because it's the same amount of dice but that should absolutely be makeover queen that is unquestionably the stat you should be rolling here yes so that's going to be 17 okay 17 on makeover queen uh amazing um so while the robots are being repaired haze is basically like tending to dixon uh sort of like 
helping help like putting some like blush on him, covering up the bruises, uh, well, that's, that's like intense. sort of fussing over. Relax him. a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, so this is basically cosmetic, right? It's not going to have any effect. Yeah, that's what I thought. But uh, Dixon is very, very uncomfortable with the whole thing. Oh, in why? <laughs> why is she doing that? I don't. I've seen her look at him, but I don't. I don't. Why is she? I was going to do it. I mean, I don't like her talking to him like that. I mean, it, it's, it's, Dixon it's... was awesome today, man. He just pulled me out of that situation, but what? I don't know what to do. You were, like, dodging missiles, and, like, you had a really active day. I just feel like you should just chill out. Like, do you want a slushie? I want uh, a nap. <laughs> when has she ever offered me a slushie? <laughs> And like I'm just in a huff. I think, I think sensing the tensions are rising, Bowie's gonna try and, um, uh, in alignment with his nickname of being the class clown and his training for uh, lunch table monologue, he's gonna try and like raise the spirits of everyone <laughs> and be like, you know, we're a team. I know we had a couple rough spots in there, but. We've gotten through worse scrapes, and we're pretty much home free at this point. What else could go wrong? Um, pew, pew, yeah, pew, pew, no, pew. no, 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 don't. Now you're done, and now you put your foot in it. <laughs> now something's going to go really bad. What? No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. What? We, with the power of friendship, we can get through anything. Bowie's right. We're in a super low-key place. We just have to keep keep laying low we've gotten to where we have to we have the duffel bag let's just keep quiet okay like dixon's like he he's happy with that because again still out of it <laughs> uh literally it couldn't the timing couldn't be worse as you're saying yep. like oh we're, we're fine we're in a low-key place no one's yep. gonna find us here you see the flashing colored lights uh coming closer <laughs> uh this time it, it it seems like there's a couple of vehicles uh that are heading in your general direction um they they must have some way of detecting where you are yeah. maybe Maybe the thing you're carrying is attracting them. It's, un it's not entirely clear right now. Um, but uh, either way, you see a couple of cop cars, uh, including that Porsche, coming in your direction from the road. Oh my god, this is just so unfair. <laughs> Let's see. Dixon, do we, do we stay and fight or do we run? The thing is, I can run faster than all of you, so... Excuse me? <laughs> cool, thanks, but, like, what should the rest of us do? <laughs> no, that's why you should not be changes. asking me. That's why you should not be asking me. Thunder Beast but... will shift into, like, a big, his big robot form and, like, be ready to stand guard and, like, thumb you all out of there. I'm with Thunder Beast. We can stay behind and take care of ourselves. That data's important. Randy, you're my best bro. I'm I'm standing by you, and I hop into my little arcade machine mech. Okay. Uh quick we question. Got that uh, right. uh free play, what's your what's your size class? My like my function? No, your size. Is it one or two? Uh I forget what it's called. It's called uh, hang on one. All sign pronoun. Have a quick I think it's size two. It, uh, oh, two. Yeah, size class yeah. two. Okay, fair enough. Two is human sized, right? No, uh, like one is one, human sized. One is human sized. Okay, fair two, enough. Two is two is like a sports car or an arcade cabinet. Yeah, okay, fair enough. It's it's and there's some expansion. There's some expansion yeah. that happens when he turns into his uh, gerwalk mech. Yeah, uh, and also, I mean, okay. particularly in your bot in your bot form, if you're like full hmm. bot form, you're you're definitely a little bit larger. Um, okay. Oh, Yeah, Dixon says, looks like we're going to have to hold out. I really hope backup arrives soon. Uh, backup arrives soon. But, Crazy yeah. exit strategy. Yes. Mm -hmm. We do have one missile. Oh, yeah. yeah. This Actually, is a half-constructed building. 
I'm not saying we collapse it on them. But, Turbo, you have boosters. I'm like, Turbo has boosters. He can jet. Um, you, you know, free play, he might be able to grab onto you. I know you got turbo jets. I'm not... I don't know how fast you can fly. And, I mean, I Super can... Sonic. Yeah. I, I know I know. Thunder Beast can take care of himself if, in a need be, we can come back and scrap him out. He can be unburied. Um... Hayes, I'm going to have to ride with you in Belladonna, but we can collapse this building and jet. Like, we can get out of here in far enough distance. Crazy idea, but Thunder Beast kind of, like, stands up a little more proudful. Uh, Thunder Beast is talking about just staying here and collapsing the building around him. If those guys are in here fighting Thunder Beast, I mean, he can... He's construction. Look at him. He can get out. Just a thought. Uh, okay, the by this point... Get out. Yeah, by this point, two questions, because the cars are still coming. Do we know exactly how many cars there are? Do we know the size of the construction area? Actually, I should ask Thunderbay what's the size of the construction area, because he might have a better idea being a Terra Uh, Yeah, Thunderbeast, you you uh, have been here for a while, and you've gotten a pretty good sense of the area. Um, it's not a building that is totally isolated. It, it is, an, as I said, it's an addition a new addition Back to the off. Southern Cross Club. Um, it is pretty large. Like it's it's enough to have like a like like parties in. It, it looks like maybe they're building like another sort of like party room. Okay. Um, a but not like a parking the, with a little bit of a beach size. view. Uh, not quite. There is a parking garage just outside of both it and the club. Um, but uh, the the cars are closing in. Um, you see, uh, like, actually, everybody give me a perception check. Everybody roll your highest passive right now. Six dice. Could I That's make an nice. argument that as I'm perceiving, I'm calculating an outcome? Ooh. Ooh. Like, I'm, yeah. like, our odds of survival. Yeah, I love it. Go ahead. Awesome. I rolled a 19 on perception. Nice. 27. <laughs> I have six dice, and they <laughs> treated me very well. Apparently. Uh, five, five, 21. Two, three, six and 21. Six. Amazing. Nice. Um, okay, so... Uh, I, again, I think it's kind of fitting because you have the best sense of the area and all the sort of the vantage points mm -hmm. to view outside. So Thunder Beast... You're, you're sort of taking stock of the scene around you. You see a couple of cop cars coming from the road in one direction. Uh, you see uh, like a motorcycle with like a black helmeted passenger uh, that is like veering around the back of this club and heading towards you. You see a couple of boats on the beach that look very out of place. Uh, like military boats that are just like a little too close to the shore. Um, you can tell that you are being converged on yeah. by a force of nemesites that have detected your location. Um, uh, free play. You are, are like viewing this situation and the things that Thunder Beast is telling you that he sees and sort of like analyzing the situation and trying to figure out a way out and it's it's not good like there's th like your odds of surviving an all-out fight with all of these nemesites uh or uh even getting away from them at this point now that they've got all these angles covered on you are very slim at this point it's down to surviving for long enough that the support gets to you before you yeah. die and if you try okay. to make a stand or run it's probably not going to work so your sort of like calculating brain is putting together like the possibilities running not an option standing and fighting not an option you have to hide you have to find a way to hide and in particular you need to hide the code uh sequencer because that seems to be how they're finding you so you need to get the code sequencer out of their reach somehow for long enough that support is able to get to you. Because anywhere you hunker down and hide with it, they're going to find you. Okay. 
Uh, I would like to just pop up here, and since things are dire, I would like to invoke my fear of suppression eliminator, giving okay. everyone plus one to their rolls this turn. Uh, when you say plus one, does that mean plus one dice or plus one value? Plus one dice. Oh, okay, wow. for, a, uh, for a turn. Uh, the thing is, I'm not sure whether I should use it right now or a little, like, in a couple of turns because I'm not sure. But, we haven't yet decided but how we want sort of, to proceed. you're sort of doing the triggering yeah. action for yeah. it now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, totally. this, when, the, when, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so d does this accompany any, like, just, like, yeah, like, a quip? Like, you just say yeah, that? No, that's, that's, yeah, that's a quip, yeah. That's literally so, what you say. All right, cool, cool, cool. The one that says, yeah, the, he goes with the, other, the four humans and says, you know, uh, the, the other three humans and says, you know what? Like, the saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. <laughs> we just have to survive. That's it. So we need to get this duffel bag out of here. Do we hear the thumping from the club? Indeed you do. It is quite busy and packed in there. And as you observed when you first came here, it is a location that uh, caters to a certain clientele that you would imagine prefer discretion. Probably a lot of people are hiding out in there. And um, they would probably not want the police coming in. Exactly. Uh, and if the sound is loud enough, there's a lot of radio frequency that may be able to, you know, hunker us down a little bit um thunder beast i know and thunder beast is like direction 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 and pointing can you hide out here i don't know and then he'll <laughs> try his best to try to fit in um i mean belladonna has one more charge of invisibility but they're gonna come to this area and it, if we can get into the club, us, and They're if gonna that come works... to the duffel bag. If we can get yes. in with the duffel bag, that will jam, hopefully, whatever frequency is coming off of that. The androids just have to hunger down. At, at that point, uh, uh, Thunder Beast says, Go in through back door! And points at the building. Oh! Oh, we can go in there and, like, the gymnasium and hit the cafeteria! Um, it, if we can go into the attached building, I mean, that's what this is. That's We can sneak into the back door. I like to party. You guys like to party? Yeah, I like to party. That's that's Randy. That's my boy. And uh, um, uh, Free Play is going to kind of do like an exaggerated robot sigh, like boop, boop, and sadly trudge over to a um, porta potty and then crouch down and go back into arcade form. Like, cause how you're, it's an arcade, he's an arcade machine. I, he's yeah. just going to find something big and hide behind it. I mean, that's kind of all any of the vehicles, any of the command droids can do in the situation. It is, it has come down to the humans to survive the last part of this with the, uh, magnetic code sequencer. Um, so your robots kind of hide out in this, uh, construction site, this addition, and you, you sneak in through getting closer to the main club, the gleaming neon light of the four pointed star bearing down on you. Um, the sound uh, of the music of the club, uh, sort of getting louder as you get closer. Um, and you manage to slip into the back of this club. Um, Probably the only way that a bunch of teenagers were going to get into this place yeah, anyway. Exactly. Let's face it, going through the front door was never a great plan. Um, yeah. And uh, you guys uh, head into this club. Um, the Southern Cross, like I said, it is, it's is—it's a nightclub. It's, it's very popular. It's very large. Uh, there's a lot of people walking around here. Uh, you see... Uh, like a haze of cigarette smoke, the smell of fine perfume, and furniture is all mahogany and brass accents. Uh, the ceilings are mirrored with elaborate chandeliers. Uh, beautiful waitresses glide past you, and men and women in expensive clothes have hushed conversations. Um, uh, the uh, waitress at one point sort of like offers you a drink from a platter, the four of you, just assuming that you're supposed to be there. Do you take them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Teenagers at a party. Heck yeah. <laughs> she she smiles as you, like, take all the glasses uh, and, uh, like, head off 
uh, heads off down the, the hallway, and you guys are just kind of like standing there, four teens yes. at an adult nightclub with alcohol in their hand. <laughs> four ten teens yeah. being awkward, who'd have thunk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, you must have been at least somewhat conspicuous because uh, at, at a certain point, like a bouncer comes over to you and says, uh, Hey, I don't think you're supposed to be here. We're here Weirdly, with our parents. I am. <laughs> you're here with your parents? <laughs> Wait, what did you say? What did you say? I said, clearly I am, as I sit and then, like, realize I'm drinking alcohol probably for, like, the third time in my life. Going... <laughs> it's a good hustle. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, I have a uh, question. Uh, yes. So it says, I'm a street outlaw, fastly, uh, street outlaw. Uh, does that mean I've done anything criminal before or met criminals before? Perhaps not in Miami, but back home. Probably not like, you know, real criminals. Yeah, not big like, time, like, not big time. Yeah, not big yeah. time guys, which would be the kind of criminal hanging out in a place like this. Yeah. Um, but, but you have a so, sense, a general sense of the criminal world. Yeah. So basically my, 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 my the question was, would I know what to say to tell him that we are basically trying to hide from the cops? And also, uh, would I know uh, if that's a good idea or not? Do you want <laughs> high-powered criminals thinking you're a high-powered criminal? <laughs> uh, I I, lo I love this. Uh, we're going to go with an active street outlaw check for that. Nice. Okay. Street Active street outlaw. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I haven't yet invoked the fear suppression, so I won't do that just yet. Right. Okay. Cool. If th this goes bad, I'll invoke it. We have Five. a reroll. You have a reroll still. Oh yeah, you I do, do have, have a reroll. Okay, uh, that was a fourteen. I think I'll stick with that. Okay, cool. Um, so I mean, it's a pretty good uh, play, and you you sort of like give give the bouncer a look like you know, I'm, I'm here to do business kind of a thing, or like, I'm, I'm, I don't need trouble right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he sort of like stiffens up a little bit and he's like, maybe don't go with the, I'm here with my parents thing next time. <laughs> and he, <walk> <laughs> uh, uh, and he, and he says, he doesn't actually walk off. He says, uh, uh, you must be, uh, here to see Miss Trevino. I can go get her. Sure. Oh wait, we, she's, more she's than right there. <laughs> more than uh, to and uh, <laughs> you guys, uh, you you see as he sort of like uh, like waves to a woman. She's sort of like a, a little bit down the hallway from you. She's uh, staring at the dance floor. She has a, a, a glass of champagne in her hand, um, and sh he catches her attention. She sort of looks across the club, um, and starts walking. Us gracefully over towards you, uh, and uh, she like comes up uh, behind uh, the 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 bouncer and sort of puts a hand on his shoulder and he's like and she says, "I've got it from here, Rocco. Thank you so much." And the bouncer, without another word, is gone. Um, okay. This stuff she is terrible. looks at you guys. Um, you see her eyes, um, I'm sorry, one detail that I forgot to mention, uh, when she sort of, like, moved away from the wall, uh, she reached down and grabbed a, a briefcase. She carries a briefcase with her, uh, as she comes up to you. Um, and you, uh, see that she kind of, like, looks down, uh, at the duffel bag that you have under your arm, um, and she sort of, like, taps the side of the briefcase. She says kind of a weird move for the Peruvians to send a bunch of kids for this, but I guess times are tough. <laughs> Good, it's I've all... already said one dumb thing. Um... <laughs> it's all part of doing business. Uh, that's just where <laughs> we're at right now. Um, we gotta, you know, low-key terms. However, there does seem to be a, a little bit of a tension. Uh, looks like Miami's uh, finest are uh, circling around outside. So we've heard all the chatter. 
something's going on. Hopefully, it doesn't involve any of you. Nope. We are here for your package. Doesn't involve us at all. <laughs> of course. Let's go somewhere a bit more private. Um, and she leads you uh, sort of around a couple of corners into uh, a darkly lit lounge uh, where you can still hear the sort of music thumping in the background. Uh, but there's not a lot of people around. You're sort of behind a curtain. Um, and uh, she, like, takes the, the sort of glass stopper off of this, like, uh, crystal decanter and, and starts, like, pouring herself a drink. Um, and uh, she takes it in hand. And she says, all right, well, let's make this quick. And she puts the briefcase on the table between the five of you. Um, and oh. she reaches her hand out towards Hayes. Oh, don't, don't worry. So, so listen, we planted a fake in this duffel. So actually, let me reach into my backpack and get the real thing and put it in the duffel bag's a decoy. Don't worry about the duffel bag. But it's we'll, my makeup bag. We'll, yeah, it's 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 her makeup bag. And so I, I take off my book bag and I hand it out. <laughs> okay. Uh that is I'm giving her the duffel bag. <laughs> At this, this point, is... I think I want to invoke the uh, fear suppression eliminator <laughs> so that we get cool. a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are w uh, right we're... at it. <laughs> it's like a we're, jam we're sport. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to need a roll here. Uh, I, I'm going to say this is going to be a active commit to the bit. Yep. With, a, yep. with an additional one from my so fear plus suppression one eliminator. Die. Perfect. 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 Oh. Okay. Come on. And I got to re roll too if I need it. Fourteen. Twenty. Twenty. Oh. You certainly know how to build tension. <laughs> Unless it's an opposed roll. I just, knows. I have a lot of illicit materials and or money in my backpack. Just kind of. <laughs> right. Uh, she just, she sort of blinks at you a couple of times and she's like, this is a very strange way to do business, but very well. Uh, and she, she reaches out and takes your your backpack oh. um she immediately opens it and looks oh, inside <laughs> i'm still committing to the bit i if she shows me what's inside the book bag i look shocked <laughs> where is it <laughs> <laughs> what, what what actually is inside the book bag? Just out of curiosity. Um, a composition notebook with all sorts of doodles. Okay. Um, some folded up paper, like some pens and pencils. Um, a calculator that still has um eight zero zero eight typed into it. <laughs> um, like just uh oh probably a cassette player and like some headphones. Okay, Is cool. there any way that I can invoke Cheerleader Kingpin by saying, you said it yourself, a bunch of Peruvians aren't going to send a bunch of kids with your product. Their location <laughs> is at 625 Lane Street. Excuse me? <laughs> you don't have the package? Uh, do I look Peruvian? <laughs> I'm just trying to get your story straight here. First, you're carrying the package. Then it's in your backpack. Then you're surprised to see that it's not in your backpack. Then you Did knew you it really was somewhere else. Did you really think I was going to tell Kyle everything? I knew it yeah. was somewhere else. Oh, okay. Now I see the justification for that role for sure. Like, I, I, I'm the one who actually knew what was going on here. I totally get it. Go ahead and give me a active cheerleader kingpin role. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dixon. I'm so proud of all of you. 
<laughs> Dixon Great has job, totally everyone. Yeah. yeah, Dixon has totally lost the plot. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm out. <laughs> I was just going to ask 18. her if she wanted to dance. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. I'm actively shaking. <laughs> what did you roll? Okay. Aaron? 18. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, so, um, she, she kind of, like, sighs deeply. She says, the handoff was supposed to happen here. I, I'm not going to some secondary location, so why don't you just go back to your boss and you tell him that he is going to bring the package here tonight or we are going to have a problem. Uh, Dixon so. pipes up. Do you have a specific time you wanted by? We'll make sure, make sure to let him know. Before we close, that's two a.m. Ooh, so might be a Apple bit high. So is incommunicado so for like three hours. Do you think we could just, you know, use your payphone to get a hold of him so that you know, so that it can't be traced? You know, we're, we're, this is my first job. Yeah, I'm. Picking up on that, uh, believe it or not. Uh, uh, Bowie raises his hand and he says, "Can I have my backpack back?" <laughs> with that, just, I look at you with pity. I'm a punchable eyes. prince. I'm a punchable yeah. prince. Look at this little guy. Look at this little guy. I want to push the suitcase. When he does that, I will push the suitcase back towards her. Will let us make our phone call. Fine. Um, you get one, one quick phone question. call. Yeah. One quick question, uh, Emerson uh, and Randy. Was was the lady around when you mentioned the cops being in the area? I did. I uh, did mention it. Yeah. Because if she knows, we can, I can also bring that up telling her that we can't exactly jump back out when the cops are around. <laughs> right. She doesn't know. You've convinced her that the cops aren't specifically after you. Um, but still. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, she says... Fine. Uh, Rocco, take them to the back. Let them use the phone. How about we dance? Would Would you like a dance? Well, I they can make the phone should... call, but I really want to dance. That's some good music out there. Come on, when was the last time you danced with a guy this young who has all the spunk and energy? I'm so sorry, Nate. I mean, you know. She looks you up and down like she is looking through you. Like <laughs> she is dissecting you uh, bit by bit. Uh, I'm going to need you to go ahead and roll me a active party boy athlete. Hell yeah. Do I get the fear of suppression, the plus one die? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It's for one round. So one, it, one roll. <laughs> one round. Uh, one round, yeah. That was two, two, one, and one. So I'm gonna use my reroll. <laughs> Good call. Uh, little better. Uh, six, six, <laughs> one, one. So a fourteen. <laughs> oh man! Please don't fail. Not you. You <laughs> fail. E. Oh, you want me to fail? Of course. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Uh, well, I definitely failed, but guess what? I'm using my second reroll. Ah, oh, you <laughs> son of a. Ted. Darn. Oh you. my God! It's worse. It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Go get him, Tyler. Go get him. <laughs> hey, she, it's she fuming. Sighs... But... <laughs> she 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 sighs deeply. She's just like. What the hell? I guess we've got some time to kill. And she doesn't like <laughs> take your hand. No, she she like does not take your hand. But she walks out onto the dance floor and she kind of like looks back at you over her shoulder, um, and and like beckons for you to follow her. <laughs> I'm uh, so okay. later. I'm breaking up with and them. You just start dancing with this this woman. <laughs> this like drug kingpin woman you don't know oh, what her deal Lord. is 
uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so you're you're dancing with her, um, and the three of you are still at the table. Rocco, the the uh, bouncer from before, comes up to you. He's like, uh, "You folks need to make a phone call." Sorry about earlier, by the way. I didn't know you were with the boss. Oh no, that's, that's totally fine. Um, if you could bring us to like the phone room or something, just to get away from this situation entirely, please. Uh, he looks over at Trevino. Yep, sure. Uh, just, just follow me. Uh, and he he takes you out of the room. You leave Randy and uh, Miss Trevino behind. Have fun, I love Randy. It so much. Um. <laughs> it's better be a good dance. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the most expensive dance of your life. You, uh, the three of you head out around uh, uh, from this lounge room. Uh, he takes you into like a like a back uh, room area, um, uh, the hallway. You see like servers going back and forth and stuff uh, from the kitchens nearby. Um, and there is like a phone up on the wall, like a wall-mounted phone unit. Um, uh, and he says, yeah, go ahead, Just hit nine and... So, so, um, Bowie is going to, like, motion to Dixon and Hayes to, like, come and huddle near the phone thing. And he's gonna take the phone off the hook, and he's gonna lean down and, like, whisper to them and goes, Okay, listen. I'm just gonna speak normally. Um, but he's whispering. What if, get now, get, get now, hear me out. We call the cops. And then, and then the cops come here, and the, and the Nerdatrons, whoever they are, they're forced to choose between keeping their cover. They're like, who are these cops? They're not on our patrol. Or, like, turning it into an all out battle smash thing which we could absolute well we couldn't absolute but like it would <laughs> add it would add it would add confusion which is what we need more of in this situation i knew you're smart bowie we do get oh. just one call right so dixon is like we get one call i mean i'm not totally against the idea but we also need extraction real quick like we are not going to like <laughs> Chaos sounds good, but Three it just means more trouble. Three kids accidentally walked into a drug club. We're calling the cops with a tip. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they they aren't talking about selling cigarettes, guys. Uh, I, hang on. So just just a quick thing. Yeah. Uh, first, I can I can hear everything you're saying. Uh, I'm standing <laughs> right I said I was whispering. Yeah, yeah. He he like he starts talking and he was like right behind you. Uh, oh my god! Uh, oh, dang it! Here. Dang it! Uh, dang it! Uh, okay, man. Surprise! It's a joke. Colombians or Peruvians yeah. or anything. Uh -huh. Just three lost kids and we were walking through and we happened into this club and then this lady was talking to us about the drugs and we're really freaked freaking out and my friend is with him and 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 we don't know what to as, do and she's gonna start crying. as Hayes is like starting to go hysterical and certainly like he's like looking overwhelmed and it's like you know getting his attention away uh free play you hear a sound on the receiver of the phone <laughs> this is ultra nebularos are you receiving me yes I had an alcohol <laughs> atari masu extraction team is inbound eta is and five time. minutes Beep, 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 beep. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> please, um. please proceed to the indicated extraction zone. Uh, and he he sort of like through like a sound of radio transmission sends you like coordinates, just actual geographic coordinates for uh, basically uh, the the back outside area of the club that you're currently in. Uh, we have your location. We have set up an extraction point. Collect your teammates and proceed to the extraction area. Uh, so, so we're we're in on this, right? The humans are in on this. Um, so not automatically. Know, okay, okay. The, so so here's what's happening. Oh, well, sorry, okay, I, I, okay, I misunderstood. I thought that we were getting the signal through the phone, but we are not. It's a direct mm -hmm. communication. 
it's it's actually happening on the actual phone. So okay. so it's like because free play has oh, it to his or yes. because um Bowie. I'm sorry Bowie. Uh, Bowie. Bowie has it to his ear. Uh, but obviously your commander is going to call you by your commandroid name. Uh, yeah. Like because uh, Bowie no. has has the has the phone to to his ear, and because you're both in there. Remember, you're both in the robot, and yeah, you're yeah. kind of both. Okay, in now the I game. get it. Now I get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So anyway, because you have the receiver, you're hearing this, and your sense, being a, a scientron, you know about this kind of thing. Like he found a way to communicate with you securely using this primitive technology, basically. You were lucky enough to put some kind of receiver up to your ear, and he used that as a way to make contact. Um, awesome. So, so then... only you have this information so far. Although I, I do want to, I do think you're probably showing some reaction to it on your face. <laughs> there, just there's like, just I don't an immense... want to date him anymore, and I don't know what to do about it. And I kind of <laughs> just want to move on and like... I hang All the right, phone uh... up and I say, we should go outside. We should leave you alone. We should just leave. Can you grab our friend? We should leave. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want you want me to get him? You want me to go get him from where he's dancing with Mr. Trevino and get him? Uh, do you think it's better for us to do it? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, listen, just stay with me. Stay okay. with me for a minute, all right? Um, and he he kind of like leads you back out from the the phone area. Uh, time's ticking down four minutes. Um, you uh, like you get out into that area. You see him walk over up to this Trevino, uh, where she is dancing with Randy. And Randy, you're 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 doing a pretty good job. I mean, it's <laughs> it's kind of an overwhelming situation. Um, you're like, you're, you're having the, like, the regret is starting to sink in a little bit, uh, after the long-term consequences of this. Um, uh, and, uh, you, uh, she sort of like, she's like smiles at you and she says, you're more than meets the eye, kid. I, absolutely. I love to dance. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, just a quick clarification, because the 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 bouncer stepped towards we we you know, uh, we are yeah, he's he's, walk, he's, a, he's walking across the yeah. dance floor so towards her. We are technically left alone, sort of private. Right? Yeah. So we, the, we, is this enough time for Bowie to tell us what happened? Because we don't exactly know, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Bo absolutely. Bowie, yeah. Bowie leans in says, "Hey, we got a call from Robo Dad. Okay, there is. We're gonna have a pickup outside <laughs> of the club." Okay, we just gotta get out there in like a couple a couple minutes. And then we're then we're clear. Okay. Okay, cool, fine, right. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Dixon <laughs> Yeah, Dixon kind of has an idea, but it depends on how things play out. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, cool. Um You know I'm the star of my basketball team, right? <laughs> That's where these sweet moves come from. <laughs> And now you're losing me. Uh, I'm a professional. Just keep dancing. You're having fun. No? Oh. I was hoping to get some work done tonight. Oh, we can get some work done tonight. <laughs> Is that right, little man? Uh, and at this point, Rock Oak sort of comes into view, uh, and he's like, uh, it, he's sort of like walking up to him, like, uh, Miss, Miss Trevino, uh, uh, I, I'm here to co collect the, I need to get him. I need, I need to get him. Uh, she's like, oh, you're taking my dance partner away. However, will I survive? <laughs> um, and she sort of like leans over. She like walks up to Randy. She leans over and she puts like a hand on the side of your face. And he's like, and she says, you couldn't handle me, honey. Uh, and she kisses your cheek, and, uh, yeah, you guys all see that happening. Um, blush. Just pure yeah. blush. Uh, pure and she goes back to just, like, dancing alone on the, on the dance floor, making that look good somehow. Um, and, uh, you, uh, Rocco sort of kind of awkwardly is like, all right, let's, I, can, I just want to get you guys out of here at this point. This this all seems like a lot of trouble we don't need. What's going on as we're shuffling out? What what happened? I, 
I don't know and I don't want to know. Just, just, just get out. Okay, well, he, he, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> no response from Mr. Vino. Uh, uh, you, uh, but, but, but the rest of you do hear him say that. Uh, for the record. Uh, and, uh, you, uh, Rocco kind of like hustles you along towards them. Uh, and, uh, he, he's like, you know the way out, right? Yep, through that door. That door there. The door that opens. Yep. Exit. Yep. God, this is not my problem anymore. <laughs> and he walks away. I I dump out the rest of the drink that I've been holding this whole time. Like, in like a potted plant or something. Be like, mm -hmm. let's, let's go. Our pickup is outside. Oh, thank God. We can talk and... about this later. Let's get out of here. <laughs> as long as we are out, Dixon is like, at least we're getting out. We are nearly out. <laughs> That's all that matters. Um, was it just out of curiosity? Was there enough time for a uh, free play to inform the boss about the situation? Oh yeah, free play immediately sent out some beeps and boops to folks yeah. to let so them that's know. Every, that's, that's the sit rep. All right, good enough. All so eight know of you know up. know what's going on at this awesome. point. Um, <sighs> so uh, you uh, like, and, and you know the exit point. It's actually back out pretty much through the way that you came in. Uh, one of the sort of like back exits uh, uh, mm -hmm. of the place. Um, you head in that direction. You're you're going through some of the back passages of the club that you came through on your way here. Uh, you see um, a dancer of uh, one of the like many uh, beautiful dancers that works here is is sort of like walking along uh, like a um, a perpendicular hallway at the end of the hallway that you're uh, like walking down yourselves, and you just have to get around that corner to get out. But as she's walking past the hallway that you're in, you see a hand come out from behind and grab her by the neck. And the figure of the mustachioed cop with the Hawaiian shirt appears in the hallway around uh, in front of you. He pulls his gun up and puts it to her head. And he says, you, Simbatrons, <laughs> love these humans, right? So... Soft and small and fragile. Can't let anything bad happen to one. Now, the sequencer, now. Can uh, we communicate silently with our robot buddies? Yes. Your direct robot, yes, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. Then, um, so this guy is standing in between us, and then we can see the door behind him, right? You can't see it. It's around the corner, but it's close. So um, I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to send a message to uh, Free Play and say, "SOS, come in the back door. Come in, fire in. Uh, carefully, carefully." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As you do that, as you yep. as 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 uh, Bowie does that, uh, Dixon holds out his hand towards Bowie, not his. Because <laughs> he's going to go with the we put it in the duffel bag. <laughs> we, we took it out of the duffel bag. Is there something that's in Bowie's backpack that could look like the thing that they want? I have a Unlike cassette it. tape player. <laughs> Ooh. It, that's magnetic strip, right? I don't really know how any of this works. <laughs> so, so, so my, 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 okay, just so that everyone's clear, my idea is to take the bag and throw it at his feet. So he's going to have to open it up himself to look. By time, yes, right? absolutely. So if, absolutely. Yeah, so basically yeah. the entire point is we want him to get, to stop focusing on the hostage. Yep. Right, right? So, so that's I, what I wanted. So, yes. Like, Emerson, just, just to clarify, these guys are not, like idiots they know what a cassette player is they've been here yeah. for a while so it's like oh. they're not they're not going to get fooled by thinking a cassette player is like an alien technology device but the other part of your plan where you toss something over to him and that's a distraction for a, like a second 
that yeah. is totally a viable plan. Yeah. Uh, so again, uh, just to be clear, so we are, we are assuming that there's a signal in the bag that they're tracking. That's true. Right? But we do not know if this... Uh, so we are, uh, we, we are assuming also that the signal isn't like 100% on the bag. Like if they are... In the sense, General they know area. it's Earth who have it, yes. but they don't know which bag it is. <laughs> right. So, so, so my goal yeah, yeah, is, yeah. again, to throw the bag so that essentially he has to pick it up and open it. Obviously, he'll see it's not there, but he right. can't do it with, like, to open it, he'll need, like, two hands or something, or he'll have to make the hostage do it. But Your logic is totally sound there because, like, if he if he could actually just sense the object himself, certain situations would have gone very differently. Yeah. Okay. It, it, your 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 guess best guess is that he's got like a satellite uh, nemesite up there, like yeah. pinging the thing occasionally, okay. so he knows rough roughly where it is. Uh, but he this that could work. That is a viable plan. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Is who's tossing the bag though? I just to uh, clarify. So basically, I'm, I'm asking Bowie for the bag, so I toss it. Yeah, Bowie. Bowie, Bowie hands it over. And yeah, I take it and toss it in front of them. Do you, you like, toss it give, in front of him? Yeah. Do you give Randy yeah. a nod, like, "Hey, this is what we've done before"? Have we? Uh, so I don't know if you can tackle him because the. The gun is still pointing at the person. Ah, this is not true. like a random. So that's I don't true. want to take any chances. Yeah. So I toss How him okay. before he before he can respond. So I do it quickly so that he doesn't ask us to open the bag. Essentially. Totally, I get it. You you toss it out in front of him. He looks down at the bag. He looks up at you. He looks for like any sign that any of you like reveal on your faces that this is a ruse. So we're yeah. gonna. I'm gonna have you guys all make a roll here. Uh, to to try to just act like yep that's the thing yeah. that we have um, and I'm gonna go through you each in turn. Um, uh, just so, one well, notification yeah. before that because I haven't actually sure, sure. used my plus one bonus from the from the uh, okay. from the fear suppression. So can I add that to my roll this time or is it already time passed for that? No, that's fine. I'll let you add it. Uh, you can go ahead and give me a, a passive good hustle. It, so no. much versatility to, to <laughs> the term good hustle. Man, I've been using uh, that all night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, uh, Dixon, you can go ahead and give me a, uh, we'll call that an, a passive street outlaw. Um, and for uh, Hayes, that's going to be a passive uh, makeover queen. Uh, and last but not least, for uh, Bowie, that is going to be a passive commit to the bit. So, question: Could Unless I make you have an, an argument? argument else. Yeah, could I make an argument that my goal is not to have my face be, yeah, this is legit. My goal is to be the most annoying, we're better than you face, the most punchable face that you could ever see. My goal is to be the smug little stain that, like, everyone wants to, like, punch. I want to be annoying. I don't need to be true. Right, okay. So in this particular situation, I guess that, that comes uh, in the form of, like, you know, we're better than you. You you scum. You're taking a human hostage. Look at the look at the lows that you that this has taken you to. Not like the noble simitrons or whatever. Like you're you're trying to sell that obnoxious vibe and use that as cover for the fact that this is a deception. So give me a passive punchable prince. Yeah. Is that really your talent? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's my type. I, my type is punchable prince, and it hasn't oh, come up till now. Fantastic. It's so great. That's a 20. Amazing. <laughs> I look so punchable. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so he, he sort of like nods. Um, and then he like adjusts his position so that he's got his gun to the back of the dancer's head instead of the side. And he just he says to her, open the back, sweetheart. And she leans over to open the bag she's just shaking she's like please don't hurt me and she goes and like starts to unzip the bag your command droids are right outside 
Uh, at this point, I, I think it is, we didn't, we haven't used this yet, so let's use it now. Everybody go ahead and roll your highest active stat for initiative on who gets to act first in this situation. Uh, I'm using Reflex Tuner, so I get an extra dice for that, as possibly. So, Correct. Yeah. That's a 17 from me. Seven. 17. Very nice. Also okay. a 17. Uh, all right. Wow. Got some good rolls happening here. I got a 16. I will be last. Damn. All right. Well... You're all faster on the uptake than this guy, um, so that's lucky. Um, but we're going to start with uh, Turbo. You were the one that got the 20, right? No, I got a Is 17. Right? Who got a 20? I got a 7. Oh, that was, that was my punchable. That was my punchable. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm so sorry. 17, 17, 16, 7. 7. Oh, 7. Oh, okay. You're not all <laughs> acting before. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, okay, so, perfect. Um, uh, let's go with uh, our two 17s. You're sort of taking a simultaneous action here. Whoever wants to jump in first. Yeah, hang on. I got to see what I can do. <laughs> I think, Honestly. can my action be... I, I want to, like, direct com communicate with um, free play and say, now. And free play is... Okay, can free play fit in the door? Um, in his in his Jurok form. Uh, I I I think maybe it could be kind of a tight squeeze. You might do some damage to the door, but you could probably get through. Gotcha. I want. <laughs> I <laughs> um, my proposition is that free play, using the um jump jets, to launch himself through the door to grab and grapple the um the syndicate person um and like get the gun away from them so going for like uh, okay speed. got it um so you're gonna like kool-aid your man your kool-aid man <laughs> your way into this place uh and and just grab this cop from behind that's your plan all right yes. cool uh, uh, let's go ahead and why don't you give me an active Gerwalk matrix for that? All right, let's see. Not bad, not bad. Um, that's 10, that's eight. 18. 18, not bad at all. Let me give this guy a roll. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, huh. Okay. So he matched you. So what's happening Ooh. here is that you like you managed to get on his back, and it is very surprising. You certainly managed to get his attention off of your friends, and you are struggling with him for the gun, but you have not gotten it out of his hands. He still sort of got it under his power, and you're like wrestling with him for it. That is what's happening currently. Uh, now our our other seventeen, yeah. who I believe that was uh, Dixon. Turbo, uh, sorry, yeah, D D Dixon, yeah. So my goal is to go is to go for the dancer to get her out of harm's way. Okay. And I'm gonna take a I a page out of Randy's book and try to tackle her out of the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, team. you're just trying to like tackle her down the hallway, get her out yeah. of uh, the insanity that is about yeah. to erupt at the yeah. edge of this place. Uh, so let me just take a look here. Um, uh, ew, hmm. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe that's a, uh, active, I can't drive 55. You, you're like, you're moving quickly. You're sort of like yeah. Russian trying to get hustle up to her as quickly as you can. Sure. And I'm uh, going so to yeah. invoke, yeah, I'm going to use the extra one, the one plus one from the fear elimination, sub, fear suppression eliminator. Very so, cool. I got a 17. 17. Okay, yes. amazing. 
absolute like full success you you like grab her you you like like tackle her and like dive into a like like a room next to this hallway and get her fully out of harm's way um okay. and then you were able to sort of like turn back uh so here's the thing uh do pro does proto voltage apply only to command droids or also to the human pilots both okay so i also want to use a second proto voltage a uh, proto voltage to uh, use my rapid fire twitch responder to get a se attack a second time on a turn i don't know if that actually works in this scenario but my I'm goal is essentially allow to... it to work but what tell me what kind of attack yeah. you're doing so basically uh i've basically tackled her out of the way and now i want to jump back and try to jump into the grapple essentially okay you're getting get you're getting gun. into that cartoon yeah. dust cloud that is erupting exactly. uh, cool 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 exactly um just a teen a cop at a arcade machine with robe with arms and legs just having Pretty a wrestle in the back of a nightclub uh okay so uh yeah so give me uh, uh this time uh your uh i'm gonna say you're you're sort of relying on your street fighting experience so that's an active yeah. street outlaw okay hang on so that's a five dice that's a 15. Wow. Incredible. Um, let me just see the wording on this. Yeah. So, did you add a plus one die from your thing? No, that, that was the last time. That was to get the lady out. It's not, doesn't say for one roll. It says all rolls that turn. Okay. Uh, then let so me just if add. You, you can add another let me die. Just, yeah, let me just add. So that's a 15 and let me add one more die. Hang on, sorry. Uh, go. 18. Make that 18. 18. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so you get up in the mix. What is your sort of like, what's your victory condition of this grapple? What are you trying to achieve here? Get him to drop the gun. That's it. Like Get, get the no gun, gun out of his hand. Yeah. Because I think toe-to-toe, right. toe-to-toe, -to -toe, -to -toe, if I'm not mistaken, human versus, uh, boosted human versus uh, cyber, ah, command droid. The command droid will always win, regardless of size class. But getting the gun out is important to avoid collateral damage. Absolutely. Uh, and you execute that maneuver perfectly. Um, and he is unable to, like, effectively defend from it. So you sort of, like, at one point, his arm is kind of levered out. You slam your fist into it, uh, and the gun goes flying, scatters across the floor down the hallway. Um, and uh, you you have sort of, like, got him more or less dead to rights. He's in the grip of uh, this... Uh, uh, Arcade machine yeah. with arms and legs. I don't know what else I can yeah. call it. Yeah. Uh, this robot, um, and and you sort of like managed to use that as a way to get the gun out of his hand. So that's all done. Uh, what is Hayes doing? So Hayes's move is to keep up the ruse that the thing that they want is in the backpack. So what she's gonna do okay. is swoop in, grab the pack back backpack, and then book it for the um, rendezvous point outside. So she's just gonna grab the backpack and then run past this fight and get out. Sure, I will I will point out that you do have the thing that they actually want also. I, I do know that I'm hoping to get to the helpful robots first. Right, okay. Qualify that um, with hoping. Fantastic, I love it. Uh, so uh, you, uh, you like, uh, you're heading out uh, you are grabbing the backpack on your way and trying to make it look like, oh, this is important to us. And you grab it. Secretly, Bowie is like, oh, thank God. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, uh, okay, and you are, are making your way out. Um, let's give you a roll for sort of like getting out of there quickly. Um, um, underestimated brain for the strategicness? Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's a whole strategy to this move that I dig. Go ahead and give me a passive, or sorry, active over underestimated brain. So that's a 20. Uh, check me on my math because it's 6644. Four. Yeah, that's correct. You did that math correctly. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, and you seem to sell it the, the, uh, the cop like even though he's like sort of like in this grapple um he sort of clocks you grabbing the bag and like running past him uh and running out the back and he 
you you hear the the sound of him like communicating to other nemesites in the area uh, to converge on your location and exactly with what the uh, device is concealed within. Hopefully, Randy, what you up to? Uh, so they're struggling. She's grabbed the bag and booked it. Um, and I know the rendezvous point's just outside the exit, so I know she'll be safe. Uh, go help my friends. Um, try. So he's grappled by an arcade machine. Correct. Dixon got the gun. Uh, Bowie's next to me. Yes. I'd, I'm going to uh, just, you know, be the party boy athlete and, like, go for that one shot and run up and punch him in the face and try not to hit an arcade machine. <laughs> okay. Uh, awesome. You you bolt up to this guy, you wind back, and you try to crack him one across the face. Uh, go ahead and, yeah, give me an active party boy athlete. All right. Can I still use the uh, hydraulic frame? The plus one? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, your chips are... All right. Uh, that's pretty in, solid. In your human, too. Uh, that is a 22. 6655. 6655. 22. Awesome. So, 22. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Let me make a quick defensive roll here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, he, this guy is obviously a pilot. He's enhanced. Um, so are you, though. And you just get that perfect angle... You wind back, and he's, like, transmitting your location, so it's it's already, unfortunately, out where you are. But uh, you crack him across the face, his head snaps back, and he falls unconscious. Uh, you knock that cop right out. Um, Jeez it! There's an Atari machine holding, or, or an <laughs> arcade machine holding an unconscious police officer. What do you do? I pants him. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Classic, and then I uh, run. Classic Bowie. Yeah. Uh, you you pull the cop's pants down. He's going to be very annoyed about that later. Um, and you book it out through the same arcade machine with arms and legs sized hole you came in through. Um, <laughs> and you book it out into the extraction zone. Um, you see the like the cop cars, the motorcycles, all <laughs> converging on your locations weapons bristling it's about to turn into another absolute massacre when suddenly from above you hear the sonic boom of the jets coming to your rescue uh you see one of them like a massive sort of like carrier jet like comes over the location drops this huge like uh army green robot out of the sky um he he crunches and lands behind the Southern Cross, uh, and turns into an M1 Abrams tank and just aims at a cop car. Yes. Uh, and he says, "Ultra Nebularos to operatives, your extraction is imminent. Are you it's all Robo together?" Dad. Yes. That would be human. Right yeah. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> yep. Uh, helicopters and planes come down, uh, lift you guys up into the sky. Uh, you guys, the humans dive into the vehicles. Uh, you guys get pulled up away into the night sky, away from the chaos of the Nemesite Inquisition and whatever was going on in the club. Uh, there is there is a, a moment uh, you... Uh, like you're kind of extracted separately like the bulldozer couldn't get to you yeah. fast so so the the bulldozer uh, lifts up just by random happenstance uh randy and hayes end up in belladonna as you're being sort of like extracted out of there um and uh, <laughs> before we wrap up our session for the night i just want to uh, give you guys a couple of minutes i want to know i want a little end cap on this uh, drama for the two of you guys not talking to me yet. We're fine, right? <laughs> it just distracted her long enough to get out of there. For you guys to make the call, right? You guys, you saved us, Hayes. You always do. Yeah, I always do. Because you're always screwing up. I'm not here for you to keep doing this, Randy. 
I'm done. I can't argue with that. I... Yeah, I... I can promise to try to do better, Hayes, but I... I'm the show one that... Show me you can do better. I'll believe I you, want to do better. Me. You With you, you make me do better. I... I understand if you need a break. I, I I don't want to. Like I said, you make me do better. You, every mess I make, you clean up. So I understand your frustration. I, I don't want you not to be next to me. But I, I understand I can't chase you. I, you're faster than me. You're smarter than me. I'm always going to be here right behind you, backing you up, whatever our situation is. I don't want to not be a part of you. But I will always be right behind you. Next mission, Randy. Show me in the next mission. I will do that. Awesome. And I think... Th oh. Little pick on the cheek. Little I pick think on the that cheek. is... That is where we will call our uh, <laughs> game for tonight on a little moment of hope at the end here. Uh, congratulations, everybody. Thank you so much for, for playing and for having such wildly amazing ideas. Uh, it was truly a joy to play with all of you. <laughs> hope we get a Thank chance to do it again. Yeah. That that was was absolutely. I had a ball of a time. Oh, I'm sorry man. I threw a bunch of curveballs. I had so much fun. <laughs> I'm so here for the curveballs. I'm all about it. It was so much fun. Well, excellent. Was, awesome. Guys. Thank you all so much. Uh, more than likely, y'all out there in chat land can hear me too. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for Emerson coming on from Nerdy City Games and joining us for this uh, closeout of our marathon. So 12 hours of gaming, $1,000 reached. Uh, amazing Ooh. job, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, that said, I want to be sure to tell everyone... Uh, Yes, the marathon's over, but uh, Rook and Rasp will be back this week. We have Call of Cthulhu tomorrow for our Horror on the Orient Express uh, stream. And then we will also be back, I believe, Tuesday for our 7th C stream. Wednesday as well for our Alien uh, stream. And then Thursday, yes, we have a full week this week. Thursday, uh, we will be back, and I will be starting up my Dragon Age campaign. Yes. So, everyone, lots going on. We look forward to seeing you all there. Take care. Have a wonderful evening. Anything else you all want to say really quick before we go? All right. Well, thank, thank, you, thank everybody for donating. This was yeah. a ton of fun to play with you guys, and uh, I hope we get to do it again. Uh, I had a, an absolute blast myself. Uh, some fantastic players we got here, and thank you to all the donors. Thank you all. All right, everyone, stay nerdy, and hey, seriously, let's play some games out there. Go to, hey, drive through RPG. <laughs> Go pick up uh, Nerdy Cities uh, Command Droids. See you all around. Command Droids, a world transformed. Absolutely. Night, guys. Yeah. All right, see you. Bye.